bread because that is what's going to give us the balance of sweet and savory. So you've got the sweet cornbread, you've got the savory turkey and veggie mixture. Then we're going to add the egg and the chicken stock. And this is going to hydrate the cornbread. So as I'm mixing, the cornbread is breaking down even further, and that's okay. We're not going to have big chunks here. And it's going to be nice and moist, but not runny. So this is nice and mixed up, and now I'm going to put it in my baking dish. Now you probably need about a 9 by 13. I'm using a round dish. You want to make sure it's not too deep, because you want to make, you want it to cook. You don't want it too deep where it's going to be soggy in the middle. I'm going to cover this with foil and bake it for about 35 minutes. All right. I cannot wait to taste this. The top is nicely brown the way that I like it. Look at that texture. Mm. Mm. That is so delicious. You know what? I really hope that you try my recipe this holiday season because I guarantee that your family is going to love it. Hope you're going to stick around because we're going to be right back. Welcome back to Hometown Holidays. Now, if these dishes are making your mouth water, well, all you have to do is scan the QR code right here for all of these delicious recipes. Up next, we've got a little flavor from down under for you, mate. Chef Curtis Stone is whipping up one of his favorite salads fit for an Aussie-style Christmas. To me, the holidays are all about family. You know, I've got young kids and they just have such a great time around the holidays and it makes you be a big kid with them. Aussie Christmas is a totally different because it's the middle of our summer. So, you know, on Christmas day, you might go for a surf before uh, sitting down to have um, your Christmas lunch. And of course, for the holidays, we're cooking on the barbie back in Australia, for sure. Whether it's throwing some beautiful fresh seafood on there, um, we, we normally start with some prawns or shrimp Christmas morning. Of course, the most traditional dessert to have around the holidays is pavlova. And a pavlova, of course, is a beautiful big meringue, fresh cream, beautiful fruit over the top of it. Um, it's a really light, summery kind of a dessert, but I kind of like serving it no matter what the weather. My boys love being in the kitchen with me, especially on Christmas morning. It's a great time when you can pull them away from their presents for a minute. I normally give them one dish each that they're responsible for, and then they get to say, this is mine and this is how I made it, and they get to tell the whole table about it, and they're pretty proud of that. For my holidays, my mum always cooks roast pork and she's so good at it. She gets that skin super crispy. We call it the cracklings and everyone fights over those cracklings. Um, gravy, of course, stuffing is, is absolutely on there. And then all the traditional sides, but a couple of fresh salads thrown in as well. 
I'm sure you've already guessed, but I'm an Aussie, and in Australia, of course, our holiday season is the middle of our summer. So we tend to serve lots of salads with the roast turkey and the roast pork and the roast beef. Um, and I think it is a really nice combination because you want something kind of light and crunchy to go with those rich roasted meats. So I'm gonna show you a shaved Brussels sprout salad. All right, the first thing you do is you cook the quinoa and then you let it dry. Now we're gonna make it crisp. So you get yourself a nice hot pan and pour a little oil. You take the quinoa and you just dump it in. You'll hear a little sizzle and you give the pan a little shake. And then for the next five or six minutes, you're gonna keep your eye on it and it's gonna sort of puff ever so slightly. While we wait for that to happen, let's make the dressing. So you want yourself a blender, right? I've got some tarragon, a little parsley and some fresh basil. So herbs, pistachios, garlic, little mustard. The mustard gives it a really nice kind of a kick. I'm using white wine vinegar, but the truth is any kind of acid. Turn it on and just start it on a low speed. You can always crank it up and then you emulsify the oil. And you've got this beautiful dressing I know what you're thinking. People have different feelings about Brussels sprouts, right? Now, usually the people that don't like Brussels sprouts used to have them overcooked and the whole house would smell like a sprout and they kind of get that weird smell that none of us like. Um, but if you eat them raw, you take a lot of that away. So this is a really different way of doing it. Now, in slicing these thin, I call them shaved, you can do two things. You can either cut them in half like this and using a sharp knife, you can kind of go through each sprout and you can slice it really, really thinly, right? And that's what we're looking for, a really fine shaved um, sprout. Here's what I do. I get myself a mandolin. Um, lots of people have these. I love mine because it comes with a cut-proof glove. <laughs> uh, and if you wanna get them really fine, here's another great little trick. Just cut the Brussels sprout straight down the middle. This will allow you to shave them really fine, you're gonna mix those into a bowl. Then what you do is you take your dressing and you spoon this straight over quite liberally. Give that a little toss. Little individual plates like that. I actually take a good old scoop and this sort of becomes the center of our plate. Gorgeous. Then get yourself a couple of these pre-blanched pieces of broccoli. So we've just dropped them in some boiling water. Make sure the water's salted and you cook them for just a couple of minutes. I've got a few green beans as well. So I take a whole half avocado for each salad. You drop that in the center. Now for that beautiful crunchy quinoa and be really generous with it. I go all the way around. Then I take my dressing and I drizzle it all the way around the outside of the plate but I give myself a little reservoir. So when you actually cut into this avocado, you're gonna get this little explosion of that dressing. All right, that looks sensational. The last thing that you do is you pick up some of those finely chopped pistachios all over your gorgeous salad. I tell you what, it is a beautiful green salad. There is so much to love. There's lots of crunch in there. Beautiful with roasted meats. And just personally, it just takes me back to Australia for the festive season. Enjoy. One of the things that makes the holiday season, Christmas time, really special for me is that it's an opportunity to really celebrate the Puerto Rican traditions. And it's one of the times when I can feel most connected to my culture. Every winter, we kick off the holiday season by celebrating Thanksgiving with all my family and friends. And then we have Christmas, which for Puerto Ricans, we celebrate Noche Buena, which is actually the night before Christmas. Growing up, my mom always took charge in the kitchen around the holidays, although when I hit about junior high school, high school, that's when I joined in, because I always loved cooking. It's really fun to kind of continue those traditions and to cook these recipes that not only have been made in my family for years, but in generations of Puerto Rican families. The sonas are perfect for the holidays because they're meant to be shared. They're crispy, they're salty, the perfect kind of thing to snack on when you're sitting around talking and sharing, which is really what my favorite part of the holiday season is. 
While the stones are perfect with just a sprinkle of salt, they're even better with a couple zesty dipping sauces. So let's whip those up first. First up is mayo ketchup. So first here, we've got some mayonnaise in a bowl, and then we're just gonna add some ketchup to it, fresh lime. And then of course, it would not be a Puerto Rican recipe without a lot of garlic. All right, this looks perfect. I'm gonna set it aside for now and let it hang out. Now we're gonna make a garlic citrus mojo. We're gonna start off by mashing some garlic. So I'm gonna add a little salt here and this just creates some friction. And then we add our garlic cloves a few at a time. And then we just mash. You really kinda want this to be a nice sort of a coarse paste, something that looks like this. And now we're gonna add a lot more fun flavor. Some dried oregano and some cumin. I'm gonna mix that in. We're also gonna be using our citrus juice. So whisk that all together, and then we're gonna add our olive oil. And we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. All right, this looks amazing and ugh, smells even better, dreamy. All right, we're gonna set this aside. I'm gonna just clear up here a little bit, and then it's time to make tostones. Tostones use green plantains. I love plantains. They're sort of a starchier version of bananas. To cut plantains, you want to start off by trimming the ends. The best way to take it off is to kind of run the edge of your knife along the peel, just to kind of loosen it up. And then you sort of stick your finger in there and just sort of force it off. Once you get in, then it comes off pretty easily. And then you just keep repeating. Tostones are fried twice. For that first fry, we want to cut these into about two inch pieces. So we've got our oil up to 325 degrees and we're just gonna drop them in gently, just like this. And you wanna see those bubbles start to form. Gorgeous. We're gonna let them go for about two or three minutes. You really just want them to get a little bit darker, like a golden yellow. All right, these look ready to come out. And I just like to drain these on like a paper towel lined baking sheet or plate even. That's what my mom would do. See how they have that slightly darker golden color? That's exactly what you're looking for. And then we repeat with the rest of the batch. And now it's time to smash these plantains. So, a little parchment paper, a little plantain in the middle, kind of put it in the center there, smash it. Just a little twist is all you need. And voila, a perfectly smashed plantain. Perfect, all right, that's our last one. Now these are ready to go back into the hot oil for that second fry. The smell of the plantain frying in the hot oil just reminds me of my mother's kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. Oh, these look amazing. They smell so good. As soon as you take them out, you wanna hit them with a little bit of salt while they're still hot so that the salt can stick to the tostones. Perfect. Now I'm gonna repeat the rest of the batch. These are perfect, they are golden, they're crispy, they're hot. I'm so ready to dive in, but first I gotta go grab those sauces. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of each of these sauces into these cute little serving bowls. This is just one of my most favorite things. You've got the salty, crispy tostón and our fantastic dipping sauces. Mm. I hope you give this recipe a try and find out why I love tostones so much. Feliz Navidad! Coming up, make some room at the table. Tiffany Thiessen is whipping up a boozy cranberry sauce, plus a spiked surprise. Then later, comedian Sebastian Maniscalco makes a family favorite that is no joke.
Welcome back to Hometown Holiday. Now, what would a true holiday feast be without cranberry sauce? Well, up next, Tiffany Thiessen is putting a boozy twist on this popular staple. I love many things about the holidays. I love the more kind of relaxed feel that everybody has. Usually most people are more joyous that time of year. I love that my kids are usually off from school and I get to spend more time with them, more quality time at home, and it really becomes more family time. So ever since I was a little girl, I used to always want to be in the kitchen with all the women in my family, because that's where they were. Every single one of them, my mother, my grandmother, my aunt. And I have very early visions of myself peering around the kitchen door, wanting to be in there with them, doing all the fun cooking that they do. There's many times where I love to do, throw a, a really good potluck party, like an old school potluck party, which is really fun, because I like when people bring some of their favorite recipes. I definitely believe you shouldn't be one to do it all. Like, I believe you're gonna give yourself a headache. It's stressful. The cleanup's a nightmare. <laughs> you need to delegate. And my mom taught me that. Delegate and you're gonna enjoy it better. I grew up in a family, a very modest family, that um, my mom really was kind of the queen of leftovers. My new cookbook, Here We Go Again, is all about leftovers. She was really the one who inspired this book. So, you know, I really learned the value of food and also really wanting to teach my children now the importance of food waste. It's really perfect for the holidays because I feel like we all have holiday leftovers. So this actual recipe um, comes from taking the cranberry sauce that most people always have leftover cranberry sauce and doing a really fun cocktail out of it. I, of course, am a homemade cranberry sauce girl. It's funny, my husband, Texas boy, grew up with the old school canned, you know, sliced cranberry sauce. I did not grow up that way. I grew up with homemade, and it's kind of just something that I absolutely love. I'm gonna show you today how I make one of my classic dishes, the blood orange cranberry sauce that I always have on my table. But I'm also gonna show you what you can do with leftover cranberry sauce, and I'm gonna show you how to make it into a cocktail. So first, we're actually gonna take blood orange soda. Now, if you can't find blood orange, you of course can do regular orange. And we're gonna actually put this on the stove top and get it simmering. But what's nice about this is the color. And of course, color means a lot during the holidays. Now we're gonna take our dried oranges and we're gonna chop these up. And it's gonna get the moisture from the soda and all the other liquid is gonna actually get them all soft again once you put them in with the cranberries. So once you have your orange soda starting to simmer, you're gonna take your oranges, you're gonna take your cranberries whole, and you're gonna take your sugar, and you're gonna add it all the way over here. So we're gonna take our oranges, cranberries, sugar, mix this all up, and already it's smelling so good. Then we're gonna take our pomegranate molasses, and then we're gonna take our liqueur, and this is just two tablespoons. And what I love about them too is it really gives that gorgeous kind of like dark color that you want for your cranberry sauce. Let's not forget the pinch of salt. We're gonna let that sit and do its thing for about 10 minutes until all the cranberries really break down and get really super soft. The holidays always means that I break out my special silver that came from my dad's side of the family. Oh, it smells like the holidays already. Uh, cranberry sauce is one of those staples on every holiday table. I love it on, of course, my turkey or any sort of protein that you have for your holidays. So this will go, of course, right to the holiday table, nice and warm. Of course, you always have leftover cranberry sauce, so I'm gonna show you what to do with your leftover cranberry sauce. We're gonna make a really special cranberry sauce cocktail. All right, so we've got our little shaker with ice already because you want your cocktail chilled. And we've got our bourbon. Of course, you could use whiskey, any sort of whiskey you want, or even tequila could work in this. But I like the smokiness of the bourbon. Then we've got orange juice. Again, really nice, complements the cranberry juice, the citrus. And then we're gonna take our cranberry sauce. And yep, we're adding it right to it. All right. We do a little shaky shake. I love this uh, this shaker because I've had it for almost, gosh, I want to say like 30 years. A lot of memories have come from this shaker and a lot of forgotten memories that I wanted to forget from this shaker. <laughs> and then you pour this over a nice size ice cube. Look how pretty that color is. Cheers. Happy holidays from my family to yours.
Yeah, it's going to be a good holiday. Now, don't forget, if you want to make any of these recipes at home, just scan this QR code below. Coming up after the break, we're going to visit comedian Sebastian Maniscalco and his family for a truly tasty Italian classic. Welcome back to Hometown Holidays. Our last guest loves a great meal almost as much as he loves making folks laugh. Comedian, actor, and podcast host Sebastian Maniscalco is joined by his longtime friend, whipping up a beloved family staple. I find a lot of comedy happens around the holidays, at the table, with family, and my family's been very, very accepting of me kind of poking fun at them. We celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. We honor the traditions of Lana's family and my family. The kids love Hanukkah. They're lighting the candles. They're saying the prayers. And they also love Christmas uh, with the Christmas tree. During the holidays, if you go on social media, you'll start seeing families dress alike. And I used to look at them and go, look at this. Can you believe that these people are doing this? Well, now I'm in matching pajamas with my wife and kids. Now, I actually look forward to what kind of pajamas I'll be wearing on <laughs> Christmas morning. Sad, sad. Food really in our family has been a tradition of getting around the table, talking to one another, making each other laugh. Every Sunday we used to go visit my grandmother and it would be part of the quote unquote Sunday supper menu. There'd be pasta, there'd be eggplant. So over the years, I became very fond of her eggplant. Now, she had passed away. That recipe pack kind of passed away with her. And I came across this eggplant that Dom makes. I'll never tell him this, that it's better than maybe my grandmother's, but, uh, but it's pretty damn good. We are here at my home in Los Angeles with Chef Dominic Di Bartolomeo. And today, we're gonna make some eggplant. So take us through the process here, sure. Dom. So I think the first thing we're gonna do, and you know, a lot of people make eggplant parm with the skin. For me, I like to do it without the skin. We're gonna take off the head, we're gonna take off the tail, and then from here, we're just gonna peel it. Do you reuse? the skins for anything. So Because I know we got people out you, there going, oh my God, he's, he's throwing, throwing out the away. thing. He could use that too. So you could use this if you were gonna make like a caponata or something like that, you absolutely could reuse it. Okay, cool. But today, we're throwing it out. <laughs> Next up, guys, we're gonna take our eggplant and we're gonna slice it on the mandolin. The key here is to get it nice and thin because that's what's gonna make the great texture of the eggplant. 
So we have our slices of eggplant here. There's a lot of different ways to bread these. We're gonna take it from a beaten egg into the breadcrumb, and then we're gonna lay it out nicely on our platter. Okay. The breadcrumb is store-bought, right? So look, I mean- Sit down. <laughs> Just answer the question. <laughs> yes, the breadcrumb <laughs> is store-bought, okay. and there's nothing wrong with store-bought seasoned breadcrumbs. My grandmother uh -huh. made her own breadcrumb. Yeah, so- That's why I asked. Yeah. And you know, so, that's the problem with this generation, right? <laughs> so, Dom, I think we got enough slices to get this thing going. Well, let's do it. It's starting to bubble a little bit. You want to throw a piece in there? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice, look at this. So two to three minutes on each side, we'll get a nice golden crisp, and then we'll lay it back into the pan, and we'll do our next round. Okay. Okay, now that we have the eggplant ready, it's time to layer it in the dish. All right. Let's start with a little bit of marinara sauce. And by the way, this is a very simple marinara sauce. It, the way you're saying marinara is uh, bothering. <laughs> so now, take the eggplant and literally, it's almost like you're making lasagna. You're just gonna just keep layering it so that they're touching, but they're not overlapping. So now another layer of sauce. Perfect. We're gonna take shredded mozzarella. I'll grab a little bit of the Parmigiano Reggiano and just sprinkle it over just the way you did the mozzarella. And we'll just keep doing this all the way to the top. This is our last layer. You want to add a little bit more extra cheese, a little more extra mozzarella, a little more extra Reggiano. Okay. Okay. That's beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to cover it. We're going to throw it in the oven at 350 for, for about 45 minutes covered, right? Mm-hmm. And then from there, after about 45 minutes, we'll uncover it and let it crisp up until golden brown, which should be about another 15 minutes. Okay. Golden brown, bro. Look at that. Oh, perfect. So I got my wife and my father here. They're going to taste test this. Their palate's unbelievable. My father has no filter, so if he tells you, it's going to be his honest opinion. So we'll awesome. take the plates. There Let's you go. go. This is the, uh, the eggplant. All right, guys, dig in. All right, let's do this. Wow. Delicious, bro. Very this good, Dan. so good. Very so, good. So, so, so good. Put it close to my mom. That plant tastes you? very, very good. I felt like over the years, Dom has become your second son. I love Dom's food. I really do. And um, I believe he is my second son that I never had. Yep. Well, if I could just say, Dad, thank you. <laughs> Get with your family this holiday share stories, create memories, create traditions, and do yourself a favor. Do something nice for somebody over the holidays. With all that's going on in the world, all that matters to me is family. God, jeez, is that great. No? <laughs> Why am I not getting an applause? <laughs> well, there's certainly no doubt that family and friends truly makes each of our holiday meals just so incredibly special. From all of us at Today, wishing you a delicious and a very merry holiday season. Today food, we're so happy. Ina Garten's here, the Barefoot Contessa, and she's yes. going to cook up a special holiday brisket for us and some other favorites. And it all comes from her latest book, Cooking for Jeffrey. Ina, good morning. I'm so Ina. happy to be here. I, I already warned you, you had two like losers in we're the kitchen. Really, well, we're sorry, we feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> you're in the middle of us. Pay attention, this is so easy. Okay, okay. Can anybody you, can do it. What I do is I make a mixture of salt, mm -hmm. pepper, yeah. mm -hmm. oregano. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's particularly easy if somebody measures it all out for I you. I know, right. I like that. <laughs> Was that garlic? Garlic. And uh -huh. garlic. And you just mix it together. Okay. And I this ask is about ordering this piece of meat. Mm -hmm. You just go to the butcher and, and say, I want a brisket. What? Oh, a brisket. Okay. You just want to make sure you don't get a corned beef, which looks similar, but it's very different. <laughs> okay. And you just spread it out on the top. Now you're right. just rubbing one side, right. not both. Just one side, just okay. the top. And when it cooks, all the flavors get in. Yep. And so I have carrots, I have celery, I, okay. I have bay leaves. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pour the onions in right on top. Okay. All these onions? Look at this bowl of onions. onions. You just That's what gives it word. Like, Look at this. Look at And it all cooks down together. Now, what is this parchment paper I'm going to show you in a second. And a couple of bay leaves. Okay. Give it flavor. Mm -hmm. I haven't figured out what bay leaves do, but I always put them in. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> piece of parchment paper, and then I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil. Okay. And do you tightly cover it? Or cover it tightly. And the tightly. aluminum foil actually will change the flavor of the Oh, I'm, really? I forgot one ingredient. What? See? What? 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 <laughs> tomato juice. Oh, Here, I'll pour that for you. Are you pour good? a whole. You work. Fill it just regular like three tomato quarters juice. Okay. With good tomato juice. Okay. okay. Not just any old tomato juice. Oh, good okay. tomato good juice. Good tomato okay. juice. Got yes. it. And then you put. Cover and cover. cover. You cover it and you put okay. it in the oven for four hours. All right. You cook it for four hours. That's pretty easy, I have that, to say. That's pretty easy, yes. right? Exactly. Even Hoda can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we keep saying that? <laughs> All and right. this is what happens. You end up with a brisket like Look this, this, and this is the sauce. And what you do is you just reduce the sauce a little bit so that it looks cooks really together. Good. And all those vegetables, isn't that fabulous? so yummy. And we have one actually already done. Now, okay, does it so matter how you cut it? It does. You want to oh. cut it across the grain exactly. because it's tender. Mm -hmm. And this is what you end up with right here. <gasps> okay, that's Get out. Taste. So good. Here, here, I'll just use this fork. <laughs> and what... <laughs> Watch out. Just kidding, just kidding. It's about oh as dangerous yeah. as the fork okay. with lots of sauce. Ooh. And I think we need to take this with us, don't mm -hmm. we? It's okay. so tender. Mm -hmm. We are. How about the tasters downstairs? It is Are spectacular. the tasters downstairs? Oh, good. I, I oh, love it. Then we need to night. take this with us. Mm. We don't want to go anywhere without no, the brisket. No, we don't. Come carry the brisket. Hi, what are okay. we making back here? We're making potato pancakes. <laughs> this is my serving. Of course, brisket goes with potato pancakes. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I'm going to start So you made that yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Two different kind of potatoes. So there are potato Potato pancakes are usually either made with mashed potatoes or with grated potatoes. Mm -hmm. okay. Grated have more, you know, they're more crunchy and the mashed are creamy. So mm -hmm. I decided, why don't you mix them both together? Mm -hmm. Which is what I did. And so then you want to add two eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add grated onion, because of course we don't have enough What's onion this? in the that? brisket. Um, that's breadcrumbs. Bread oh. And some chives. <laughs> I thought it was and cheese. And lots of salt and pepper. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lots of salt and pepper. All right. Mush just that like up. that. And pepper. And just mush that all up. You do and that with your you, hands usually, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah <laughs> clean hands are a tool. Clean hands. Best, got it. Cook's best tools. Okay. And then what you end up with is this. Oh. And what you do is you just do some butter and oil in the pan and just make banana mm. pancakes. I, a hot pan, mm. I got A hot pan. Real hot, okay. And butter because of the flavor and oil because of the high burning temperature. You don't want to burn them. And we actually have some to taste. Oh, oh here. Be I'm already taste eating. potato pancakes. And mm -hmm. you can Would always you like serve one? them with a little sour cream. A little sour cream, yeah. a little chives, mm -hmm. a little applesauce. Oh my God. Is that good? I know, delicious. That and, dessert's and just for, there to be beautiful. And, no, that dessert is actually a um, yeah. molasses maple um, honey mm. cake. It's a mm. classic kind of holiday d d um, dessert. Okay. And we okay. have the whole meal. I'm loving it. How's that? This was <laughs> is awesome. That, is that your idea of breakfast? This is my idea. This is engagement brisket. I know. Will you marry me? <laughs> We've got all these recipes at today.com slash food. Click on today.com slash shop if you want to check out Ina's book, Cooking for Savannah. I'm sorry, Cooking for Jeffrey. It's the first day of Hanukkah, so if you're cooking up something special for your family, we've got the perfect way to finish off the meal. Here with a lesson on how to make an Israeli jelly donut or a sufganyot is head pastry chef at Bread's Bakery, Edan Leshnik. Welcome, Edan. Hey. Okay, please, we, we need to know the secret, but we know it begins with a perfect dough. Right. Well, I can't give you all the secrets, of course, because some of the some of the stuff are, you know, very top secret. But I'm going to show you some of the basic things of how to make a perfect uh, Hanukkah donut or a sufgania, as we call it in Hebrew. Um, obviously, it starts with a basic dough. So I have a dough that I made here in advance. Um, this is a very simple kind of process. Um, we're mixing flour, wheat flour, uh, eggs, butter, sugar, salt. Um, and a little bit of vanilla paste just to get some of that flavor. Mm -hmm. um, this was mixed and rested for about uh, 8 to 12 hours just to let it ferment. Um, remember that we're dealing with a fermented dough, um, and that's, you know, that's magic um, in itself. Yeah. I so mean, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually... People are, that? listen, people are a little intimidated by a donut. Yeah. So how do you shape that baby? Right. So I'm going to shape that right now, and I'm going to show you. But don't be intimidated. Um, are. All it takes is a little bit of practice, but I've divided Pretty. this dough up into six equal parts, and the magic kind of happens as I'm rolling this. I'm yeah. going to show you what happens. To perfect one, two, three, and I can actually feel when the donut is perfectly round. Yes, okay. that looks good. And then what? So I guess I guess all it takes is really uh, a lot of practice, and I've got a lot of practice over the years. <laughs> Your donuts um, look so beautiful, these... by the way. All they of really those... do. We're thank shocked. Thank you, thank you. Um, so then, do you drop them in the fryer? Yeah. Is that what the next step is? Well, it, if I drop these in the fryer right now, what's going to happen is that they're just going to drop and stay in the bottom of the pot. Okay. So we're actually going to need to let these proof first. Um, 
in a warm environment just to let the dough rise and let the yeast do um, do its thing. Um, so we already have some uh, uh, donuts that are proofed and ready to go into the oil. So let me show okay. you what that looks like. Oh, yeah, They're yeah. much larger, oh, yeah, as you yeah, can yeah. see. Um, and you can see all those vanilla specks. Yeah, and okay. what I'm doing is I'm basically taking that and flipping that right over. Oh. Wow. So the top side down, just like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. And now this is going to take about two minutes okay. um, at about 330 degrees Fahrenheit okay. um, or 160 degrees Celsius. Wow. Um, we're we're going to let this video kind of this of... happening. It looks so delicious. So yeah. satisfying. Yeah. So that that goes on all day and we're making thousands of these all day and we can't even, you know, we can't even stop at this point. We're just going. OK, so um, now we have to so fill those right babies, now, right? Yeah, so I have some strawberry jam over here, and this is what these uh, sufganiot or Hanukkah donuts look like when they're out of the fryer. Mm. Um, really nice and light. Um, it's just kind of like a pillow of uh, delight. Ooh, mm. So of delight. I'm going to take this piping bag and I'm just going to fill it, Stuff it just like that. Um, and you could be, you know, you could go crazy with this and you can fill them up until the brim. I mean, you know, nobody's judging you during this uh, December month. <laughs> Seriously. So. <laughs> Really, and you don't have to tell anybody because the donut is kind of hidden here. So, once you bite into it, you'll feel that you'll feel all that filling. And um, then once you, so once that's you what it looks like. Up, then what and then do? just as a garnish, I top it. Yeah. Just like that. Beautiful. All and right. you can actually use aside. that filling to make those beautiful tarts that you also make. Yes. So, so what's nice about this filling is that it's super versatile. I mean. You know, we have these traditional um, Hanukkah donuts, but we can also make something or a spin off on that. And this is our Linzer tart. So Linzer tart, yeah. what we did with the Linzer tart is we have a beautifully baked tart shell um, just with short dough. Um, and what I have here is a piping bag of um, hazelnut paste. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a caramelized hazelnut Ooh. paste. So it really adds a lot of texture and a lot of flavor to this to this tart. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pipe in a spiral. Yes. Just like that. Oh, that looks so delicious. I mean, I hate the fact that our show is going to a commercial break because I could watch this. It's this so is mesmerizing. Mesmerizing and satisfying and delicious. You, we want to say thank you so yes. much. We're going to um, put the rest of this on our website, but you, this is amazing. Right. And they look mouthwatering. Thank you so much thank for you. being with us. This you, is thank you so much. So cool. We really do have the best bread the in the best. business. So to get this recipe and wish we had some. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Today.com. Flash food. We're back with today's Food Loves Football. The Washington Commanders and the New York Giants are going to go at it head-to-head -head this Sunday night on NBC. Joining us with the recipes the whole family can share in on is Chef Michael. Uh, wow, I need my Salamanov. Salamanov. Sal Sal Salamanov. Sorry, Chef. So close. I just so nailed close, it a minute Carson. Ago. 
Chef Salomonov, great to have you here. We are great to be in, here. We're going to start in Washington. By the way, these are recipes that we might want to use for the holidays because we're absolutely. The holidays as well. Listen, this is like good for football. This is good for Hanukkah, right? Yep. We get to fry stuff yeah. and we get to uh, hang out with our families on Sundays. What are we eat. starting with? First, All right, so chef. we're going to make a schnitzel. We're also going to make a little bit of tahina sauce okay. right here that we just add to this blender. A little bit of garlic. Right, tahina is like the mother sauce, mm. right? A little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt and cumin. And then next to it, totally. we've got schug. All right, if you think my last What's name is called? hard to pronounce, Salmanov and schug. Schug, schug, say it like you're like angry a little bit, right? Schug, it's a chili paste with wow. garlic. It's so good. Wow. We're gonna blend that up. We're gonna mix it with the schug. And then we've got this kataifi, right? Or kataif dough, it's sort of like filo dough's fancy cousin. Okay. We're gonna use this to bread our cutlets, wow. to make our schnitzel. Right. So we've got a little bit of chicken, we got a little bit of flour. How is it, guys? We don't have a lot of time. Wanna get, how's the schnitzel? And how is it? Good? Are, but it's very amazing. All right, get in there. All right, so this yep. is like the best chicken schnitzel, in my opinion. It's and the really, really sauce. crispy. The tahina for dipping, which is really good. Spicy oh. enough for you? So what's yeah. the dip? The dip is so good. It's, it's a tahina sauce. Tahina oh, sauce like with exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and then, oh. separately, we're going to make potato pancakes. There. We're going to make latke fingers or latke yeah, french fries. Yeah. Love it. All right? So we're going to grate our potato. We've got our potato grated here. We've got a little bit of flour with a little bit of salt and egg. Yep. And we're going to actually bake this in a casserole dish, all right? So we're going to add some onion. We're going to mix it up. And how much of that moisture do you lose when you bake it off? So actually you don't. So what you do is you actually bake it uncovered for about 20 minutes, and okay. then you cover it because you want the starch to sort of help bind it, all right? right? We, got to, we only have about 30 seconds, All right, so we're going to chop this up. Fry it. Chop, so it's like a bake and then a fry? A bake, you let it chill, you how chop it, it up, oh, and you okay. make french fries. Mm. We're going to throw oh it in. That's ridiculous. What do you think? It's fantastic. You guys like it? Love yeah. that. All right. Okay. This is a better, better than a French fry. Listen, perfect for Hanukkah, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect Michael for Salamana. game day. Thank oh, you very much. It. All these recipes are at today.com slash food. Welcome back. It's Make Ahead Monday. This week, we have a holiday twofer with some traditional favorites for Hanukkah and Christmas. Here to help us, we've got Jamie Geller, food and lifestyle expert and the author of Brisket 101. Yum. And <laughs> Jocelyn Delk Adams, cookbook author and creator of Grand Baby Case. Good morning to both morning. of you. Good morning. We got, yeah. we got some savory, we got some sweet. Let's start. You must love brisket if you want a whole cookbook. <laughs> I love it. My husband loves it. My Who six doesn't? kids love it. It feeds the family. Yes. So yeah. that's really, really Great good. Leftovers. Look at the size of this What's thing. the most comforting thing? It's amazing. But if you do want leftovers,
Breakfast with Make Ahead Monday, double this recipe because you're okay. going to gobble it up. Mm. So we're going to start with nice salt and pepper, sear the brisket mm. on both sides, right? right? That develops layers of flavor. Mm -hmm. Then you come in here and we have our mirepoix, mm. which is fancy for onions, carrots, and celery. Right. <laughs> Not much. Okay, we're going to then sear our tomato paste down here. Make sure you get that nice so and dark and red. That's mm -hmm. what's going to bring out the flavor in here. We add some garlic just for the last minute or two because you don't want burnt garlic. That makes it bitter. bitter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to deglaze. So you can use wine, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. use beer, you can use water, yeah. but why? <laughs> right? Yeah. So we get that in here. We get some beef broth in here. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're using a second cut brisket because mm. fat equals flavor. Yes. We're going to yeah. cover that up. Not before we put in our bouquet garni, uh -huh. which is just a bunch of great herbs, mm. parsley, bay leaves, rosemary, and some lemon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put the brisket in on top of that. We're gonna put yeah. the brisket in the oven, mm -hmm. low okay. and slow. So we put this. No, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, brisket yeah. on top of yeah. that. Thank right. you, Al. Thank God you're here. Covers and put that in without it. <laughs> <laughs> low and slow. Oh, that would be very disappointing. Yeah. 300 degrees oh, until it's buttery soft. Right. And then mm. the vegetables underneath are uh, amazing. Everything is amazing. You strain it off. Yeah, you strain it off. You reduce that down. You. Ideally, put this in the fridge and mm -hmm. slice it when it's cold. That's how you get oh, those nice, okay. beautiful, thin slices. Oh, my goodness. Then you rewarm it oh gently. God. I know. Yes. taking that, huh? Juice oh it, God. God. Oh, Go for it. I know. That's all. Why yeah. am I standing here watching this? Yeah. And I just so good. Oh, I came good. all the way to make this for you guys. No. <laughs> okay. You got some leftovers. You got a great way to yes. take some latkes. So, and... it's the holiday. Latkes right. are the classic food. Oh it's also great if you're gluten-free. You just take some shoestring potatoes, use mm -hmm. the food processor, salt and pepper, some either cornmeal or potato starch. Some eggs, fry them up. Mm -hmm. Don't overcrowd the pan. That's how you get nice crispy latkes. Top it with some You've got pulled some barbecue brisket. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then that's oh. really nice and heavy. This is really nice and crispy. And then top it with some fresh arugula. Mm -hmm. I say it's great for the holiday, or if you just love food and love life, oh my God. <laughs> substitute that bun for a latke. So did you put barbecue oh, sauce? Oh, yeah, barbecue oh, sauce. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. I can't wait to try awesome. it. I can't wait for you, babe. I know. You, I know. Right. So this is mm. basically a sweet dish that you can we'll prepare take for potatoes. you know Thanksgiving, Christmas, okay. whatever, all the holiday long. Mm -hmm. You start with a sweet potato casserole, and we're gonna start with sweet potatoes that we peeled. Mm -hmm. We've also boiled these, cubed them, could you and use then the if, if you, were running you could, short. you could. I won't tell anybody. Okay. okay. No I won't judgment. tell anybody. No, My no, mama no. might be like side eye you, but <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna add in some um, whipping cream. Okay. We're gonna add in some brown sugar. Mm. You can get that in there. And oh, then yummy. also some vanilla, some cinnamon, Yum. some nutmeg, some mm -hmm. butter. And you whip it all together. Whip it all together. It's almost like a sweet potato mash, you know, mashed sweet yes. potato. Very at that close point. to the sweet potato. Uh, it or is. pone, or as my family would say. You know, <laughs> hey, we I got that debate all the time, this right? Is a whole other, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we put that right into our dish, and then okay. we start with kind of a crumble okay. where you have some flour, oh. you have brown sugar, so that's and then just the I foundation. Like, yeah, oh. I like to use oats. So this is for people who have nut allergies, okay. mm -hmm. like my daughter, or my you kids. can use pecans. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. So the oats are a nice variation. You're gonna bake that up with some marshmallows, and oh, it's man. so good. It's so good. So this is what you can do to kind of switch this around you can make dessert okay so we're gonna scoop out some of that sweet potato mm. at the bottom okay. and then we're gonna turn that into a no-bake cheesecake oh we're my just gosh. gonna add that to a bowl with some whipped cream also kind of fold that in it's gonna be so light and How fluffy do do yeah just fold it in like this mm, okay. nice whisk oh my gosh. add that together really slow this is like a nice zen thing to do after mm. you've been like totally crazy with the <laughs> chaos okay. of the yeah. holidays yeah and then we're gonna to add a little bit yes, of please. our thank you graham cracker to the bottom. Oh. We'll scoop some of this no bake cheesecake right Would in, like oh and then God. top oh with gosh. a little whipped cream. I know this is great, right? And it's so simple. And then add a little of our cinnamon to the top, and you just entertain. You have this. Oh my yeah. God. Now, how, can you do these uh, like delicious. ahead of time and you put them totally in the fridge? You totally can. Put them oh in the gosh. fridge. You mm -hmm. want them to kind of set up and then serve them when the guests come. And it's going on my holiday menu. I know, it's right? Amazing. I love it. So easy, if right? All of this was oh my the meal. Goodness. Good Lord. Hello. <laughs> this is all right. It's so good. I'm good. I'm good. This Sunday night marks the start of Hanukkah, and if there's one traditional dish that will be on many families' tables, it is latkes and applesauce. And we thought, who better? And there's nobody to show us how to yeah. make it than the barefoot Contessa herself, Ina Garden. She's here. She's sharing her exclusive recipe featured in the new book, Good, good Night, night Boobla. Boobla. <laughs> <laughs> Written one by, by one of your closest friends, it, Cheryl Half. All right. It is, and it's so charming. Okay, it's amazing. It's kind of a take on the it's Good Night, night moon, moon. Yeah. But the bubble comes to put the little rabbit to bed. Oh. <laughs>
just I love adorable. It. It's so joyful. All right, so we are making latkes and applesauce. Yeah. yeah. Traditional, delicious. So food. I thought we'd start with applesauce. Mm -hmm. And usually okay. make it on top of the stove. You have to turn up the heat, turn down the heat. Right. I put the whole thing in a Dutch oven oh, and what? throw it in the oven. Yeah. So I've got um, lots of apples, three pounds uh -huh. of green apples, tart, three pounds of sweet apples. Yeah. And then oh, you want to put the yes. zest so of this two, is lemon and yeah. two oranges and one lemon. Cool. Okay. And the juice of two oranges and one lemon. Yes. Two oranges and one lemon. Okay. Right it's in. easy to remember. And just mix them around. And okay. then we have to put in butter, right? You have to have butter in everything. So that's another quarter, quarter of a pound of butter. Just right like in that. There. Cold yep. butter, just, just like that. Just put the whole that. thing in. Okay. Yep, here okay. we go. And brown, brown sugar, sugar. Because of course you have to. Look at this. Right there. And so then you leave the peels on the red ones? I leave a few peels on because it makes the whole texture. apple sauce rosy. Oh, It makes it a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful color. Of course you make your own apple sauce, by the way. Of course. Of course you do. And then, right. and then this whole thing just goes right in a um, Dutch man? oven. Are you in charge of oh, that? I'll, I'll okay, smell great. that, by yeah. the way. Uh, I, I know. That. Doesn't it smell like applesauce already? Can you already? explain just real quick a Dutch oven? What is it other it's, than just um, a pan? It's a metal pan yeah. that goes in the oven and just you put the lid on. Oh, like and it this. can just sit like that. And you that. just smell that. 350 degrees oh. for an hour and a half, and you just forget about it. And then you whisk it at the end, and you end up with this applesauce. Oh. So that's the, that's that's the, the texture, texture the consistency? It's just delicious and sweet and tart and... Oh my God. Isn't that mm. wonderful? So, different by the way, jarred applesauce. That would be something just great to make. Mm -hmm. like for, I know. For it's kids, great for good. babies. Breakfast, it's great for in yogurt. It's great with a little cream on it for my dessert. My son, Hal Hager, would like this. Uh, uh, I mean, he hasn't started to eat yet, but when he does, he would like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking forward to it, right? Mm -hmm. so Come on up. potato pancakes yes. so we can put applesauce on it. Okay, so, so this latkes. is what I do. Okay. So, latkes. Okay. Yes. Little latkes like this. They look and yes. you can put beautiful. sour cream. So, you shred them with a cheese grater. I just use a grater like this. Like the way you do apple? carrots? No, no, no it's a, a potato. <laughs> <laughs> You've got apples on the brain, I do, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> that was too good. <laughs> so you just grate them like this, mm -hmm. and then I grate a little bit of onion too, because oh, because of course it tastes better with everything tastes better with onion. Mm -hmm. And then you take the whole thing, you put it in a big kitchen towel, yes, and you just roll it up, and kind of squeeze some of the, the liquid out of it mm. without breaking it, just like that. Okay. And then it so goes how in. Much, how much onion goes in? Just a so little. Just a couple of tablespoons. Couple of tablespoons. And it's okay. one and a half pounds of onion. Is this flour? That's flour. That just goes in there. Okay. One egg. One egg. Okay. I love that I've got Jenna cooking. Why well, not? <laughs> That's why. When well, you're here, we're pepper. gonna cook. <laughs> salt and pepper. Okay. And just mix the whole thing together, just like that. So you've got potato, onions, a little flour, bit of egg. a little yeah. egg to hold it together, just like that. Do you and you like need a, the egg, right? Yeah. You really do to hold it together. Do you like a certain type of potato? I know um, what's a, a russet what, potato is just great. Just perfect. Yeah. Just it, they're drier, so it really now, works the, well. The key is this cast iron. You got to okay. have that yeah. kind cast of Cast iron right? is really great. And then you, you can do the, it in regular this, pan, the but these are great. It's okay. for this, right? So the butter's for that. So yeah. we've got. One, uh, two tablespoons of butter okay. and one tablespoon of olive oil. Okay. And the reason why you do that is you get the flavor of the butter, but you also you know get the high burning temperature of the olive oh, oil. Oh, that's so smart. So, and how long do these guys cook? These just cook for a couple of minutes. I'm okay. going to show you. So okay. I take a quarter of a cup measure yeah. uh -huh, I and see. just do a quarter just like of a cup that. like that. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. right in yeah. and you pat it down. And they stick together pretty easily, and they stay right? Together. And you want them a little, you know, I like when the edges Ooh, are a little yes. crispy. Yeah. So the inside is really flavorful. So it doesn't really matter if they're perfect. So you add and some and applesauce apple. and sour cream if you, you want. You could do either right? one or both. Oh or, my gosh. Uh, they're pretty good, aren't they? The very best. <laughs> the very, very best. Now, what are you doing? You and Jeffrey, what are y'all doing for the holidays? We might be going to Paris. What? <laughs> Want to come? Yes. yes. Can we, we can come? have a good time. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> what are y'all going to do I'll there? I'll make Christmas dinner for you. In oh, Paris? That'd be fun. Yeah, it's great. We just, I mean, I like to just go lie on the sofa and read books and go for long walks and go to the market and oh. buy ingredients and come home and cook. That's not a bad holiday, right? What's, Sounds pretty what's awesome. Jeffrey's favorite food? Roast chicken. Of course. <laughs> of course it is. Why did I even need to ask? I know. Thank you so much. Thank we you love so you much. Happy holidays. holidays. I'm happy so happy holidays. to be here. Happy holidays, Jim. Mm -hmm. oh, so I've made my know. holiday for these recipes. <laughs> go to today.com slash food.
Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has a lot to show us. <laughs> Get it? See what I did, Joy? Got that. Take it away. That's right, guys. We are about to have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> First off, I'm using sweet potatoes, so you know it's gonna have loads of beta carotene. You know from that bright orange color. And we need to shred them. So you can either use a box grater, the largest hole, and shred them like this, or you can take the easy way out like I do, and it comes together in a fraction of the time using a food processor. Before we start mixing the batter, I need to drain them. So I line my big mixing bowl with lots of paper towels and I just give it a nice squeeze. So this is uh, one small to medium yellow onion that I also shred in the food processor. I'm adding in three eggs, a quarter cup of matzo meal to stay true to the recipe, but you can certainly use any flour that you'd like, including gluten-free and just some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. This batter is gonna require hands. Just get in there and mix everything together. And now we're gonna prep the baking sheet. I put down some parchment paper and be sure to liberally mist your parchment paper with nonstick oil spray so that your lockers don't stick. Now dump all that batter. You're going to spread out so it's evenly on the bottom of the baking sheet. And one last thing before we pop it in the oven, generously mist the top with some more olive oil spray. And now this goes in the oven set at 400 for 35 to 45 minutes. So while they're cooking, let's talk about toppers. In my house, we love either applesauce or sour cream. Here I'm making barbecue applesauce. I take natural unsweetened applesauce, quarter cup, and I'm adding in just two tablespoons of your favorite barbecue sauce. Guys, this comes out so sweet and so crave worthy. Now we're gonna make chipotle sour cream. It's a savory, fiery version. I start with a quarter cup of light sour cream, or you could swap in plain Greek yogurt if you wanna bump up the protein, and a jar of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, and you could find this at the market. And then chop up that pepper, and I'm gonna add these peppers right on in with my sour cream and along with one tablespoon of the adobo sauce. And this, this is gonna give it a smoky richness. And certainly you could adjust by adding more sauce, more peppers. And now we have a sweet and savory option. It's time for the taste test. I can't decide which one to do, so I'm gonna go for both. That's good stuff. And think about how much oil we saved by baking them instead of frying them. And it's a game changer because all the lakas were done at the same time. I am wishing everybody who's celebrating a happy Hanukkah filled with a whole latka love. Mwah. Now those look pretty darn Yum. Good. Be nice if we had some here. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, for these recipes, head to today.com slash food. This morning on Today Food, food writer and stylist chef Will Coleman is here. And we are so excited. He's got some great recipes for anyone who wants to ring in the new year with delicious finger food and a festive cocktail. And the best part is all these snacks can be served at any celebration, big <laughs> or small. Will, good morning to you. Good morning. I am so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I was going to ask you about that. This is your first time on the Today Show, and I know that it's been a long time in the making. It's been a long time in the making, and I couldn't be more than grateful to be having my day. Fantastic Wednesday with y'all. Happy to have you here. We couldn't be more excited that you're here, Will, and you've got three recipes for us. So what are we starting with? I have three delicious recipes to bring you into the new year. It's going to be a great year, and we're starting off with one of my favorite recipes, fried chicken. or making it to a small bite to bring it to your New Year's Eve brunches, to your dinner, to your appetizer, um, cocktail parties, whatever you want to bring it to, this recipe is for you. To start off, we have our buttermilk brine. I love using a buttermilk brine whenever I am frying chicken. It's simply buttermilk, spices, toss it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the fridge for about two to four hours or overnight for maximum flavor. The buttermilk makes tender chicken, juicy chicken. 
it can't be better than that. Hey, Will, what's the benefit of working with air chilled chicken? Yes, I love using air chilled chicken whenever possible. It's simply just better chicken. It preserves the juices and the chicken, creating a nice meal to have in your kitchen. But if you can't find air chilled chicken, no big deal. Regular chicken will do. Well, Will, do you change the oil out between the batches of chicken? How does that work? You know, so we're at the frying chicken right now, y'all. We have our flour, which is all-purpose flour. I'm adding in some of my favorite seasonings, onion powder, garlic, cayenne, paprika, all in there together, mix it up. And I have my oil right here heating, actually. And this is the same oil that I used in some previous batches because my mama taught me that, you know, the more oil you use and the same oil you use, the more flavor packed in there. Um, <laughs> so I'm using this oil. It's been a couple of times I've used it, but guess what? More and more flavor is occurring every time I use that oil. And Will, you cook with hot sauce too. How, I need to know, how hot is the hot in your hot sauce? <laughs> you know, I like to say I want to enjoy hot sauce. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to be burning my mouth so hot that I can't enjoy my food. But I grew up on Red Frank's hot sauce. I think it's the superior hot sauce. I'm from Detroit, so I'm repping the hot sauce on Red Frank's. Mama Coleman, proud of you today as you're doing all of this. Let's talk about something sweet, if we can, pretty quickly. You've got, what is it, the cherry and goat cheese pies? Yeah, so we got some cherry goat cheese pies today. They're literally delicious. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy them for dessert, enjoy them for breakfast, or enjoy them all throughout the day. That's what I do. Um, and it's basically got some cherries. I got fresh cherries in here and also dried cherries. Also some candy ginger because I love ginger. And I'm gonna spice them up with some cardamom, some cinnamon, some sugar, all going in that pot. I let the frozen cherries simmer a little bit so they can break down. And then I add my sugar, my spices, and a little bit of almond extract because I'm obsessed with almond extract. <laughs> so put that on the pot, put it on the stove, put it on, and guess what? Leave it alone for about five, seven minutes and then you're all set. Well, I, I feel you on that. Let me follow up with you on the cardamom. What kind of flavor does that add? Because you don't typically put it in a pie, right? You know, sometimes you can put cardamom like in blueberry pie, but it's just a little bit. It creates this flavor of, mm, what's that? And whenever I'm cooking, I want people to be like, what's that? So just a little bit of cardamom takes it a long way and creates an amazing flavor in your food. When hey. I make something and my family says, what's that? It's not usually a good thing. When you do it, it's fantastic. What's that can be good or bad. Try to make it good. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Will, most people don't think about salt and pepper when they're doing their dessert, but I see some salt and pepper over there. How do you use it exactly? So I like to use savory and sweet ingredients in my baking just to add that what's that flavor in it. Um, so I like to add the salt and pepper and the sugar all into one bowl. And then when it's time for me to make my pastries, you can see right here I have my filling in it. I have my goat cheese on top. And I put my puff pastry right on top and I like to just press it with my fingers to create a little crimp. But you can also use a classic fork to get the other um, look of a crimp. Once that's done, I like to do an egg wash on that baby to get nice. that nice golden brown color in the oven. And then hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper and sugar all on top. It creates this beautiful color. It creates this beautiful texture. As you can see, the salt and pepper goes a long way. And you also you can use that salt and pepper and sugar um, on your cocktail glasses for the rim. Will, you have got our mouths watering. Thank you so much, uh, and very, very happy New Year to you as well. For everybody at home to get your hands on Will's recipes, head over to today.com slash food. This morning on Mega Head Monday, how to turn our le weekend leftovers into a festive holiday brunch. We're so excited here to help us. It's Vanessa Lachey, actress, mom of three, and I can say this because I know him better half to singer, <laughs> Nick Lachey. She's out with a new book all about making memories called Life from Scratch. Family traditions that start with you. Vanessa, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys. Good yeah. morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, here. this is a book not only for people who can cook, for people who can't cook, and it's about tradition. So Basically, what did you the, want to get the, out there? The base of the book is traditions, and it was so sweet talking backstage. Jill was like, this is Jill-proof. I can do this. <laughs> right. Yes, I think that the recipes in this book are to encourage you to get into your kitchen, to start hanging out with your family, yeah. with your friends, put on some music, maybe pour a cocktail if you want. And then food, the kitchen is the heart of the mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. So making dishes that encourage you to have those Christmas Eve you know, um, parties or sure. that Thanksgiving festive night with your family and not be overwhelmed by 
by chefing it up, by right. just yeah. having fun in the kitchen. You've got so, some great shortcuts. Yeah. This is uh, Brooklyn's brunch casserole. This is my daughter Brooklyn's brunch casserole. I know all of y'all at home have a version of this. This is Brooklyn's version. So we're going to start over here. You're going to brown the sausage mm -hmm. and then keep the keep the grease in it and add uh, about a half go. chopped onion. That's more so. Do you okay, want to I'll do that yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. And then what we why this is Brooklyn's is because we take just store bought biscuits. So oh. I'm out there for you, moms. Got to make this easy. <laughs> And the store-bought biscuits come in, obviously, a circle. Right. We just take it and we quarter it. Oh. This, you can give your kid a butter knife, and this mm -hmm. is something they can do, which Brooklyn does. And then I have her take the quarters and pop them in wherever she wants. Mm -hmm. So she feels like she's part of the process. While right. I'm over the stove, she's over here doing the biscuits. Do you biscuits. grease this first? You're going to prepare the dish. Mm -hmm. um, I love getting a stick of butter and just, like, do it. You could spray. That's what mm -hmm. everyone does. But the stick of butter is a fun one, too. Then you're going to bake this for a little bit. Par okay. bake it, like, 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. Um, it was 8 minutes in my first oven at our house in California. <laughs> it's 12 minutes at our house in Hawaii. Oh, so just they, know your oven. Yeah, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and so then once you have the biscuits, you're going to take it out while they're still warm. And actually, you're going to put in first your, right over there, the sausage uh, onion mixture. It's already nice. cooked. So I'm just going to put it all over, mix it up. That looks good right there. Right there. Then you're just going to add the egg because that's what's going to be the binder. Is that more. just egg? This is just egg and about a, a quarter to a half cup of milk, whatever to your liking. Mm -hmm. I do a quarter. And then you're going to put this in the oven, bake it for another 15 minutes. Right. Take it out, add some cheese, and bam! Joe, Joe, Joe and I got started. We're, He's yeah, out of control. Wow. Oh, wow. Vanessa, this is a 10. I, I, I love breakfast casserole, yeah. and I yeah. love the biscuit uh, no, no, addition. No, no, no. It's so easy, and then it's a biscuit. That's what my kids love. So I used to do it with um, potatoes or... Uh, like a, a crescent roll bottom, but she just loves biscuits. And so I said, let's this, do it with biscuits. This, this would hit the spot, too, after a long night with mom just hanging out, yeah. with friends, partying. This would hit the spot. But I'm right. all about the next yeah. one. Yeah. Monkey make bread. It, we make yeah. the sausage um, onion, sorry, the night before. And then Ugh. on Christmas morning, you just put it together. This so is, it's is so good. All right, what's going Monkey on here? Bread. Monkey bread. Monkey so bread. So this is something that I love because it's such a great creative piece. You can see on the end there. So again, with the biscuits, because my kids love biscuits, you're just going to chop up some biscuits and then your store-bought biscuits, put them in a bag, this is what the kids get to do. Yeah. It might get a little messy, but and it's better the bag? cleaning up the, the kitchen than cleaning up a whole bunch of toys. In the bag is just, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? Hey, what's in the bag, man? Sugar. <laughs> and then again, again in a, a grease um, bunt pan, you're going to just pop them in. So you just literally, I like to separate them in the bag so you can mm -hmm. get the, the sugar and the cinnamon all around oh, it. Nice. You're going to do your first layer there. Mm -hmm. Just pop them all in. Then you're going to layer in. We just do raisins because my kids love okay. raisins. But if I'm making it for Nick and his friends, I add the walnuts because he loves some walnuts. Ooh. Nick loves this recipe? Nick loves this. He loves everything I make, which that's is like nice. the best. Yeah. Even if he's lying, he doesn't tell me. So that's a good husband move. I love yeah. that. Little, little chef note there. Love everything your wife right, makes. And then, um, so then you're going to put that in. Then you're going to yeah. add obviously when you have all the biscuits you're going to add oops I need to stir this up because this is butter more butter sorry y'all yes, and some more sugar uh, yes. this is why the kids love it I know these, are, these aren't these are healthy this is just easy fun and family friendly then you're going to pop the it holidays. in the oven you're going to let it cook for 30-40 minutes let it chill then you're going to turn it over once it's chilled and it comes out oh, like this that and looks everyone, good. everyone just comes it's like a breakaway this is a breakaway mm, bread this is and you, just, you just break it away and you eat I wow. love that I love that. it because it's all low carb that's why oh, I look at it. This is healthy. Very healthy. Very <laughs> healthy. Yes, sir, thank you so much. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. You here. Thank you. Again, the book is called Life from Scratch. And for these recipes, head to today.com mm. slash food. That was fantastic. This thank is amazing. Guys. We will be right back. <laughs>
Thanksgiving is just one week away, and we have a side dish that will spice up your menus. We have self-taught vegan, Chef Priyanka Knight. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. She's gonna, How you're are gonna, you? We're, we're great. We're great. You're going to make your chili maple skillet cornbread. That's a mouthful. from, And it's from your new cookbook, The Modern Tiffins. This is a two-part recipe. Let's start with the cornbread. Talk about what ingredients we need and then how this, uh, how this differ, differs from traditional cornbread. Certainly. So right here, we just have half a cup of all-purpose flour. There's going to be a lot of the standard basic ingredients in this that you would see in a cornbread. So we also are adding three-fourths cup of cornmeal. Okay. I'm using yellow cornmeal. Mm -hmm. We're adding a little bit of sugar. And I love this recipe because you can basically just dump everything in the bowl and mix it and bake it. Easy. Um, we're adding some baking powder. And we're also going to add a pinch of salt. And now the Indian-ish ingredients that come into this are garam masala. So mm -hmm. this is, I know, very popular amongst people. And I actually love it in this dish because it's a lot of those warm spices with an Indian cuisine that I think go really well with holiday items. You know what? So it's interesting. You can taste it in there. I just had a bite. because yeah, She it's... ate it. She ate it before you started. I did. It's savory. <laughs> <laughs> she, she ate it before she goes, I was watch curious. me. I'm going to eat it before. <laughs> I love that. That means, that means it looks tempting. You mm -hmm. want to eat it. So... The next ingredient is one chopped green chili. This could be an Indian green chili or a Serrano chili. Mm -hmm. We need some spice in there, there because go. I just can't live without it. And then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of fresh coriander leaves. I love that sort of freshness, that brightness it brings to it. And then we're gonna add our liquids, which is basically a little bit of plant milk. You wanna make sure to use unsweetened, mm -hmm. and I'm using oat milk. And then a little bit of neutral oil. So this is just I'll try because a vegetable it's vegan. oil. This is vegan, correct, yes. yeah. Now, you put all this in a cast iron skillet in front of us. It's in front of us in a cast iron skillet. Does it have to be cooked in that? It does not have to be cooked in that. I just think they're really cute, and they're really mm -hmm. festive, especially during the holidays, and it adds a really great crust. But it can cook, be cooked in any oven-safe bowl. So, so good. Even I'm the aftertaste. I feel like I just had, like, a meal meal. Tell me what's on the top. <laughs> this garlic, is this a garlic butter? Yes, it's a garlic chili maple butter. Um, which I'm going to show you right after mm. I get this into the skillet. So you basically yeah. get all of the batter in. And this is already pre-buttered with vegan butter. Okay. And then you're going to get this into the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. Okay. So I'm just going to put that in there. Mm -hmm. And we actually have one ready for you. The magic of television. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! Now you put butter on top, right? Yes. Now why so, do you do that? Well, I do it because once the cornbread just cools down for a few minutes and if you scoop that butter right on top, mm. it'll melt through. So once everyone cuts a slice, they get a little bit of that glistening so, butter. Yeah, yeah. That is so yeah, great. So for the butter, we're going to use uh, some softened vegan butter and we're going to add some fun ingredients to this to spice it up. Okay. So we're going to add some more green chilies and a clove of garlic. That's why Chanel but, was like, woo, this is hot. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I didn't know it was coming. It was good, though. That's why you're I'm good. sorry. Yeah, I should have warned you. It's a little bit, you know, it's got a little spicy. Kick. But yeah. We're also going to add a little bit of mango powder. This is mm. also called umtra powder. This is a little bit of my secret ingredient in this. It has a little bit of tang and smokiness okay. that you kind of find familiar at a barbecue restaurant. So I wanted to emulate that. Oh. And then some maple syrup. Mm. I mean, this, this is complicated for you and I. I mean, I know. Not, <laughs> she's got a lot of stuff going on I in know. here, but it's all, beautiful. All the things. What is that? What was and that last part? That was some fresh coriander, some salt, and some pepper. Let me hold it up and so you basically you just blend this up. And then what I do, I, I'm, I'm going to spare you the food processor noise, is I actually put it into like a deep cup so then the butter can fill into it. And then use a mini scoop. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> scoop it out. You can be generous with your butter. It's okay. the holidays. Like, wow. I never claimed this was healthy. Um, <laughs> well, this is why people love you on Instagram, though, because they see these and then they go home and or they try it. I right always with think you. everything is vegan is healthy. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, no, I, I like to <laughs> indulge. I, I do like it. to indulge. So. It's Thanksgiving. And then we're just going to scoop that right on top. So 
It mm. looks like it looks I like Here, let me show everybody at home because I okay. messed mine up by eating mine. But, but so look at this. That's what happens when it melts. Priyanka, thank you so much for this incredibly <laughs> creative. creative. That's yeah. right. Incredibly creative. You can find out more on today.com slash food to get actually this entire recipe. I love it. Thank you, Priyanka. Yeah. And I like your yellow this morning as well. Thank you so much and happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. You yeah. can check out our Today Show Instagram page to see more from Priyanka and other creators. We will be right back. For cheat day Friday. Today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here to make hey. some holiday party classics Happy for our, holidays. our Happy very holidays. own Studio 1A party. <laughs> yes. Oh, hey, we are going to have a party. So, spinach artichoke dip is like my weakness. Like, <laughs> but I usually have chips with it and I can clear out a whole bowl. You yeah, have come easily. to the right table. <laughs> so, what are we going to do today to make it a little healthier? Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was lighten up classic, rich, and indulgent spinach artichoke dip. Yes. And that's what we're going to do. But then I wanted to bring it to the next level okay. and make a pizza out of it. Ooh, so this is a me. spinach artichoke dip cheesy pizza. Okay. Ooh. So we're starting with the classics for uh, the artichoke dip. This is going to be a 10 ounce frozen drained spinach. Okay. I just microwaved it to thaw it out and then I drained it. Okay. And I'm adding it into what's over here. We have a can of quartered um, artichoke hearts. Okay. We have, here's all of the ingredients. Oh, we have so you light have a lot of mayonnaise, to it. right? A little bit of salt, red pepper flakes, oregano, garlic, and Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to mix this up. While I was mixing this up, I put mm. into the oh, oven wow. portobello mushrooms. So oh. we're doing a low carb pizza here. Mm. And then oh you just goodness, this take. Is delicious. This is fantastic. Is that, mm -hmm. Can I be honest? I thought it would be okay. This is really good. Oh, I'm so I glad. Thought, okay, okay, fine. Fine. And then that, this is a light mayo that I put in okay. here. And then you just put you um, put this in the oven with Doesn't a little bit of mozzarella. Doesn't this taste too good mozzarella. to be true? Like it tastes this is delicious. Tastes naughty. It's half the calories. It's half the fat, and mm. it's packed with fiber and protein. And for people so that want good. that crispy sort of pizza-like crust, mm -hmm. yeah, you can look at this. Do you put on English muffins? Yes. Oh, you oh, put it's yeah. on a whole grain English muffin half. And, and it's, it's filling. ridiculously I mean, it's easy to whip this and up. And it's satisfying because there's so much flavor in there. That's really good. Right. I know that, mu wow. that mushroom is really good. Too. All right. Okay, pigs, pigs in a blanket. Pigs. I've been dying to mm. take this one on, so this is Don't very love exciting pigs for me. I'm obsessed with pigs in a blanket. So we're going to make a version that I'm calling phyllo dough wrapped sausages. Okay. So this is frozen phyllo dough. Ring to it, but <laughs> let's call it pigs in a blanket. Okay. Well. about that? So we took. I took phyllo dough here. I put two on top of each other. You can get this in the freezer section in any grocery store, and I misted it with a little bit of oil spray. Then. 
any lean poultry sausage. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm using a smoked chicken apple. Okay. okay. And I take each of the um, links and I'm cutting them into fours. Okay. So four, and then you put them at the side of your phyllo dough. Mm -hmm. I'm going to brush on a little bit of oh. Bichon mustard. Oh. And you're so much flavor to it. And then Thank all you. I'm going to do is roll it up. Just roll it up and, and then do you and bake then it? You put, yeah, I put it on the mm. baking sheet, seam side oh. down, 400 for about 15 minutes. This is really good. And this, <laughs> i got to get this dipping sauce for you. Wait, I want somebody to try it so you guys don't think that we're crazy. This Dave, is a creamy mustard sauce. Come no, over seriously. here. you got to come try this. I feel like you guys yeah. see us and you probably think we're like, mm, mm, mm. But we're just serious. Just really David, quickly. come over I here. I want somebody else so you guys know that we're not crazy. This is really, really good. <laughs> what do you think? It's really is good, it? right? It's very good. I tried oh, the mustard sauce. Really try the mustard sauce. The sauce. <laughs> so good. Go for it. Mm. Uh, wow. Right? <laughs> I didn't think you could do it with pigs in a blanket. I was like, me neither. You try, have fun. But yeah. this is like this delicious. Isn't that easy? Yeah. Put mm. a little toothpick in and. Wow. Okay. How are you gonna bring us home? The fun birds. Okay, I'm gonna bring this home. Bring it home. With eggnog, but we're not just mm -hmm. making a lower calorie, lightened up, healthified eggnog. Okay. We're going to make a chai spiced eggnog. Mm. So this is cool and the house smells so delicious when you make okay. this. I have four cups of 1% low fat milk in here, but you could use whatever milk you want. Okay. And I threw in three Chai tea bags. Oh, the tea bags. So what's okay. happening is, while this is steeping, it's infusing cinnamon and cloves and ginger Ooh, and cardamom. It's so yummy. Okay. Then you just throw in a slurry of, this is a little bit of cornstarch okay. with mm. some of the reserved milk. What is okay. that, to just thicken it up? It's going to thicken it up. Mm -hmm. Then we have a dash of nutmeg okay. and a dash of salt mm -hmm. and a little bit of maple syrup. Okay. Okay. And then once this starts to thicken up, okay. we're going to add in your vanilla extract, a little okay. bit of vanilla. The whole house will smell good, won't it? Yeah. I mean, it spill smells up. so good. You Why do you have to wait to put in vanilla? Because um, some of the flavor will evaporate out oh, if you cook it okay. too long. So you put that in at the end and then you chill it overnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is insanely delicious. I, of course, a little bit of whipped cream. Dylan, taste this. And a little this. bit of whipped cream goes It's like a milkshake, so right? No there's no alcohol in this? There's no alcohol in this. What but of course you can. You can wait, spike it. What alcohol would you add to it? So because of the chai seasonings, I would probably say to add either whiskey or oh bourbon instead of rum. Okay, is I'm this not nice? just saying this. <laughs> would any, please, guys, just come try this. Who up. wants some eggnog? Please, <laughs> come try it. Leslie, come on in. Eggnog, pigs in a bag. so delicious. Thank you. Because I cheers, everybody. We're feasting. Because you guys are all watching. I told you we were having a party in Studio 1A. But it's really good. Good. You oh, have to check out these recipes and I promise you'll use them so at your next yes. holiday party. Just go to today.com. Right? Did, did you try this? did it. Uh, All three are winners. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Today food, we are tackling dinner and dessert and drinks too, and we're keeping it all vegetarian. Here to help is Mary McCartney. She's a cookbook author and host of the Emmy-nominated cooking show, Mary McCartney Serves It Up on Discovery Plus, where she cooks with some of her famous friends. Oh, and she happens to be the daughter of someone else we all know, Sir Paul McCartney. So good morning, good Mary. Morning. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. So 
you are cooking vegetarian for us, but we don't need to, you know, be scared of that. It's fast, <laughs> easy, and you're going to be, I think you're going to be impressed. Already. Well, so they're already fast, eating, and they have good. been eating for the last two minutes, so. So this is Burger. a caponata skillet pizza, um, and I'm starting off, it's like an Italian sort of inspired topping, mm -hmm. which is one eggplant, some red onion, which adds some color. So you don't color. the eggplant. You can just, just chop it up into little bite-sized okay. pieces. Fry it off, uh, saute it in a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil. Then I'm going to add a little bit of chopped uh, canned tomatoes. Okay. Oh. Tomato. It's tomato just tomato nice and, nice and juicy, too. and this topping is like a real meal. It makes it very substantial. So this will be the sauce and the topping all mixed into it's one. It's so quick, and okay. you, you, you want that nice little sizzle and bubble mm -hmm. that we're getting. Oh, that smells then really delicious. Then I've got three cloves of garlic, mm. and good. it's adding flavor. Uh, and I love it. Calamata olives. olives chopped mm -hmm. in half. Mm. Adds a you nice can saltiness. use any kind of olives though, really, okay. as long as do not leave the pips in. <laughs> <laughs> you Don't. bite into that, it just doesn't have the same. You do not want any broken teeth. Yes. And uh, I like a little bit of chili heat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to really add good. chili flakes, everything, you know, what you would have in Whatever. your store cupboard. Okay. And depending how spicy you want it, you can add or take away. Okay, so that's and our topping. That's literally it. And are you making the dough also? Yes. Oh. Okay. So that just cooks off for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You could even put it on like that. Now the dough is a flatbread, which has uh, all-purpose flour, mm -hmm. a little bit of baking powder, just so it kind of puffs up and has a little lift when okay. it cooks. What else are you adding now to I'm it? Now I'm going to stir in a quarter of a cup of unsweetened plant-based milk. Whatever as long as you it's like. unsweetened, okay. you can use oat, cashew, almond, <laughs> and I'm adding enough, like a quarter of a cup. Okay. I want to Just make sure we enough. have time for dessert. So oh, once that's all that mixed in. together, this olive oil. And some olive oil so it's nice and glossy. Mm. Then that will come together into a nice into dough. Mm -hmm. Literally, you don't need to leave it. It's, it's ready really to go. Good. I would want this on so many other things, too. Roll it out. Where are you going to cook that? In this in pan? In the skillet, oh, yeah. Oh so literally, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a wine bottle or <laughs> Which is always nice. Which you have. Then this would go, you roll it to the side of the skillet and then Cook it on a nice hot skillet for three so minutes good. each side. And then you throw the topping Chop on. The topping You've on. got to Dylan, try this. Yes. And then try the dessert because. And I like oh, yeah. to just put all the topping in the middle like oh, this. Wow. Just shove it on, and That's then amazing. push it out to the side so it's got nice height. That is so. You know what? And fresh. then a handful. Like even if you're not a vegetarian, this is something for yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. All I of was... my cooking is more aimed towards non-vegetarians. Interesting. Okay. I was skeptical about this dessert because of oh, the secret ingredient. Let me show you. I am a no bake dessert, so we should be no able to bake chocolate this up quickly. The mm. thing that there's no whipping of cream, no like egg whites. It's um, it's silken tofu. What? Silken so tofu, a bar tofu. of chocolate, melted. Melted. That's just tofu. In a there? little bit of vanilla. No, I'm curious. And uh, hot chocolate powder. Oh, really? Hot chocolate powder. So then you don't need to add any other sugar so or anything. That all whip it together. Wow. And it goes really loosey. Wow. And the thing with Yum. the that's literally it. The thing wow. with the tofu is know, right? it's a flavor carrier and what it's kind a texture. Of tofu? It's silken tofu, the like silk. they use okay. a lot of Japanese cooking. Oh my god! So you don't, right it doesn't in. taste like tofu. Yeah. Right, this, this is just, delicious. And then you, you don't even have to Shove bake it. Shove it in here and literally you can decorate it and eat it. But that's I would it. probably put it in the fridge for 15 mm -hmm. minutes to set. Wow. Just, All right, thank you so you much. The new season so of Mary good. McCartney serves it up. It's streaming now on Discovery Plus, and of course, Get these recipes. Just go to today.com slash food. We'll have to put the drink recipe on the website. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. We've got to try the cocktails. This is Cheers. This is for you. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Homes around the country may be filled with the sweet smell of freshly baked cookies this weekend. <laughs> but this is for us, for all of us. If yours ever turn out not quite right, <laughs> we've got some help. Yeah, Tessa Arias is a baker and the founder of Handle the Heat. <laughs> She's got solutions to the most commie, common cookie problems. I pronounced your last name right? Yes. I got you right. Good, Good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Okay, we, got, we have the best intentions. We follow the recipe. It seems yeah. like we're going to do it right. And yet sometimes the cookies just don't turn out the way we hope. They don't turn out quite right. Although there's no such thing as a bad cookie, right? right? right. We're still going to eat them. Okay. But sometimes when we're baking the recipe, something goes slightly unexpected. And okay. with the holidays, we want to impress our friends and family. Okay. So, what, so what's what, the issue here? What happens Okay, here? so sometimes your cookies can spread into sad, flat that 
happens to me. Does it? Often. Why does that happen? So it usually happens when your butter is too warm. So oh. if we take a look at these two sticks, okay. this one, if I press my finger in it, it's too warm. Yeah. Whereas this one just yeah. gives a little, a little bit. Give. A yeah. little give. Yeah, so we want to make sure that the dough and the butter oh. never gets too warm because then when it goes in the oven, it'll melt into a so salad. And never melt it. it. I have an impulse just to pick that up and <laughs> bite it. Like a real... A little Jenna, but yeah. I don't blame you. Okay. We love butter. I put so, melted butter in before. Me just too. So yes. I think it's so, quicker. Because it calls for it. Yes, exactly. The recipe was created for melted butter, so the chemistry is going to be a little bit different. Ah, oh, it's about okay. And that's okay, so... Now, this is supposed what? to be a problem, but this looks amazing. It looks What's like a dumb Okay, so sometimes Sometimes if your cookies turn out too thick, yeah. they get a little bit doughy or gummy in the center, mm -hmm. or um, they get hard like sad hockey pucks. Oh, this is not That's not sad. sad. Okay. okay, so what do you do there? Um, so if you like thick cookies, then do you it. want yeah. this, then you want to add a little bit of extra flour to the recipe. Mm. Oh, okay. If you don't want them to come out as thick, you want to make sure that you're either using a digital kitchen scale when you're portioning out your ingredients, which I promise is so quick and wait, easy. Wait, wait, for your ingredients? Yes, yeah, so if you're measuring your flour, your sugar, Sugar, this will make you a perfect but, baker. But wait, do, do, don't yeah. you just put it in a cup? <laughs> like, here's a cup full of flour, and then you weigh it? I love it? my scale. I promise it's quicker. Than There's less but how do you do it? You, so you okay. pour the flour on here? So let's say I had a mixing bowl. I'd put it on here. I'd press zero to take away oh, the weight to take of the away mixing the bowl. bowl. And then you and then dump you add it in. in. Ingredients. Yeah. That's so interesting. It's, that's how the professionals do it. I okay. promise it's no, We are shocked by that. <laughs> have any of y'all ever done that? No, you have not. Okay, one of you has to try at the end of okay. today. I promise All right. you will be convinced. Now, okay. what about so this one? This is perfect. perfect right? These are the perfect cookies. So they're perfect because we did a few little extra glamour tips okay. for them. Okay, what'd you do? So one is measuring out your cookie dough with, with a, scoop a scoop. That makes it quicker, easier. Mm -hmm. Every cookie will be the same size. And there's okay. no fighting over who gets the bigger cookie. Mm -hmm. As and, and before you put the cookie dough balls in the oven, if you're making chocolate chips, just dot a few chocolate chips. Ooh, add extra. extra. On the ball. And that I way like they that. look pretty. And I everyone like knows they're chocolate chips, not raisin. Okay. Like what is this raisin. thing for? And okay, then. so when the cookies come out of the oven, you can either use a glass, or if you have a measuring, a, a biscuit cutter like that, you take the cookies, they're still hot, right out of the oven. Uh -huh. You use this, and Jenna, literally, you just go like this. What? Why? And what? it reshapes it into a perfect circle. Oh, what? So nobody's ever So if you ever have a blobby that. cookie that kind of looks crazy, you want it to be just that a little work. bit bigger, so try that one. There you yeah. go. You're a pro. Look how you do that. You're a pro. All right. <laughs> what if the bottom's burned? Which okay, happens. Okay, so if yeah, your I was say, cookie bottom's to burned, us. yeah, mm -hmm. happens all the time. You can usually smell it when it starts to yeah. happen. Using a dark coated baking sheet like this will create so many issues with burnt bottoms. So instead, we just use a light. Why? 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 Really? So this dark color will conduct heat more aggressively. Because dark so, colors wait, attract So many heat. things are exactly. flashing to my mind yeah, right now. Of that's burnt true. things of my past. I only that's have right. this kind. It wasn't even your fault. No, so we need to get this one. So we need Do you have this color. kind? No, I only have this Me kind. Me too. <laughs> I didn't and even can know you they... think of a million things a million, burnt that which... I'm blaming on this tray? All right, let's, yep. we only have a couple of seconds, okay, but okay. Let's, do. let's decorate. Okay, so Jenna, why don't you take this? Okay. Squeeze bottles are easy. They're easy for kids. And we can just decorate little lines. And this is just powdered sugar and water. It's super what? simple. So How do you make even it? the little ones can do it. Okay, and what's why do we have a taco shell? <laughs> That's a tortilla. Tortilla for storing. Do you know cookies. what a tortilla is? Yes, I do. Okay, please. What's it for? Helps to keep your cookies nice and soft. Wait, so you, you put can it make in them days in advance, store them in an airtight container. You put this in? Yep. Why do you do that? Not it's a... kind of like brown sugar where you need something to help with the moisture content so it, in the container. <gasps> so it doesn't dry out. Oh wow, my god. You and you put the top the on it. I did That's... write an entire cookbook on cookie baking, so I know all the tricks. She's very <laughs> experienced. All, all right. Um, thank okay, you so thank much. You. We appreciate it. To get Tessa's sugar cookie recipe and her cookie solutions, all good. Head to uh, today.com slash food.
with a Christmas themed cooking with Cal and we threw Ollie into oh, the mix good. this time. Uh, we are going to make my Aunt Tilly's Christmas cookies. I've made it before but never with the boys before okay. for a cooking with Cal. Uh, this is just a holiday favorite in our house. Watch. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Aunt Tilly cookies. <laughs> Aunt Tilly cookies. Aunt Tilly's I'm cookies. These are my Aunt Tilly's cookies. We make them around Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's make some Christmas cookies. Christmas. Yep, that's baking powder. Mommy. And gently stir it together. Gentle. Now finish this up. Stir that together gently. Okay, well done. Oh my gosh. Okay. In the boat. In the bowl. What are you doing? <laughs> oh we'll yeah. fish the shells out. Just what? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Crisco. Crisco. Oh, already. This is melted and cooled so we don't scramble the eggs, okay? So pour it in very slowly. And a set. And a set. Can I okay, pour oh, the whole this bottle? Whole one? Whole one? Okay. This is how you do it, see? Mm hmm Oh, that is gonna get my hair dirty. So we're gonna put them in for 15, but we're gonna check them at 10 and see how they look. See how they're not like golden brown? Yeah. But they're nice, nice and fluffy? Yeah. And then the underside is golden brown. That's how you know they're done, but we want to keep them nice and fluffy, okay? All right, they're nice and cool. Who's ready for the best part? Me. Okay, what are we yeah, going to do now? Yeah, they are hard. Make the icing. Do you dump in some more of that anise flavor? All of it. Can I smell? Can I smell it? Can I smell? <laughs> Put in just enough water to make this a nice frosting, but we don't want it too runny. How are you guys doing? I wanna, how about you help Ollie and I can do this by myself? Oh my, oh my, get the Why is there so much sprinkles? Nice. Are you ready to taste? Even though we've been licking our fingers the whole time? Yeah. Okay, pick your favorite one. Decision. Alright, see how they are. Mm -hmm. They're so good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Look at all. <laughs> For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash Today food, we have an extra sweet special to tell you about. On our streaming channel today all day, we are bringing you today's great American holiday cookie swap. I'm going to take you all across the country to sample cookies from all 50 states plus DC and Puerto Rico. Oh, I love that's a lot of cookies. We lot. all shared some of our favorite recipes. I shared a recipe for snickerdoodles, which I just love and it's super easy. Craig shared one of his mom's go-to recipes and Dilly Dilly represents New Jersey with a classic Italian cookie. So you can get all of these recipes. You can scan the QR code right on your screen. Well, another <laughs> Chanel Chanel is the happy. tasting They're table is here. loving it. Like the cookies yeah. and glass of milk there. Another great baker who joined in on the fun, and she's with us in studio, Hello? Zoe Francois. Oh, she's the genius behind the popular blog Zoe Bakes, and she's going to share her cookie. It's in honor of the great state of Vermont. Good morning. Good morning. What are we making? We are making a maple raisin holiday cookie. Wow. With okay. real maple syrup. Not real. Oh, stuff. of course. Of oh. course. Straight from Vermont. Okay. Um, it's made with whole wheat flour, 
um, maple syrup and raisins, which all are in honor of my youth in Vermont. It Very looks healthy. Like a gingerbread in color, yeah, but okay. Yeah. And it kind of tastes that way. I snuck one in the back. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So it's really healthy. It's really delicious. All we're doing is mixing together. Um, some butter, some whole wheat flour, the mm -hmm. maple syrup. Okay. Uh, just do that right in a bowl. And then we're going to roll it out either on parchment paper. It's a very sticky dough and we oh. want it to stay that oh. way. Okay. Um, and so we'll roll it out on parchment paper mm -hmm. and then, or on a marble, because that'll yeah. keep it nice okay. and nice. firm. Now, how are we getting the raisins yeah, in the there? Raisins then there. we're going to <laughs> fold raisins. We're going to chop up some raisins, oh, mm -hmm. fold them right in, and then oh. roll it out again. Oh, okay. And so then we're just. In the back. Yeah, so see. it's right in there, and you really want to press it in there so that they're even poking through. Okay. And then we're just going to use oh, that's cute. Okay. a nice little stamp. Stamp those out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, any shape is good. Any shape is good, but this is for Christmas thin. time. You don't want to get too thick, I guess, yeah, for yeah, your yeah. job. Yeah, you want it to be nice and thin and crispy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and just have that really beautiful chew of the raisin. Okay. All right. So we you stamp these those. out, put them onto the sheet, mm -hmm. bake them up until they're nice and crisp. Okay. And then, and then we, we have some icing on yes, top. Yes. This, oh, is, show this us. is the best this part. This is it. This, this is, is the best part. Okay. This is all about So you're on a wire much. rack to cool. Yep. And then we're just going to add. Uh, I baked. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to add um, our Vermont maple syrup. Okay. And, to, and we're just some confectioner sugar. Just confectioner sugar oh, and you. maple syrup. That's <laughs> it. Too. We're very impressed with ourselves <laughs> for knowing And we're just going to stir that together until it's really nice and smooth. And it's the perfect consistency so that it's going to cling mm -hmm. to the cookie. Syrup and sugar, that's got to be pretty sweet. It's, it's, Which I like. It's sweet, yes, but exactly. it's also going with a cookie that's not okay. terribly sweet. Okay. So what this is think? like How's, the crown. How are the cookies going down? You yes. can't even speak. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Oh my God. Okay. Once, show, us show us your drizzling that technique. Because yeah, we have a few once seconds. you have your um, glaze made up, we're just going to put it into a piping bag, okay. cut a little hole. And then just you can drizzle. just drizzle it. Oh, right lovely! On top. Oh, that looks so pretty. Well, that is just gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So and then we... you could add sprinkles or whatever you want to make it festive. Well, that is just beautiful. I kind of like the rustic look, though. I yeah. do too. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to today.com. We're just getting started with okay. the cookies, uh, as mentioned. Yes. Make sure to watch today's <laughs> today's Great American Holiday Cookie Swap, and you'll be talking like me. It's streaming <laughs> uh, on our streaming channel today. And we are also going to be raising awareness for our friends at Feeding America. loves to receive homemade treats this time of year and there's nothing better than a big tin of Christmas cookies. Well folks we're about to blow your mind. What if I told you 
You only need one dough. What? One recipe to make no. five different kinds of cookies. I don't believe it. Okay, Watch. I'd say that's pretty sweet. And we've got the cookie queen right here, Kristen Tomlin. She's the founder and CEO of Dough and opened the first cookie dough scoop shop. It's right here in New York City. And Kristen, you have to help us because one dough for five different cookies yes. sounds like a miracle. I mean, we're all so busy this holiday season. I'm going to simplify the baking process, make it super easy. So we've got this one cookie dough that's going to turn into five different really yummy flavors. And it's fun for the kids. The yes. Family. Okay, so tell us what we need to do. So you this is unique because it starts with brown butter. What You're exactly good. is brown butter? So you just toast it, and it essentially just brings out this really deep, nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. So you'll know it's ready when you smell it. So let that go. Okay. Um, and then once you have your brown butter finished, you're going to stir in a few more tablespoons butter of on butter. butter on yeah. butter on butter. Yeah. Yeah. Butter to butter. Yes. Butter, butter to butter is a great ratio. Great yeah. ratio. Mm -hmm. But the brown butter brings out the other flavors in the cookie dough, like our brown sugar, mm -hmm. like our vanilla. And then this recipe has an extra egg yolk. So one egg plus one egg yolk. It's going to make our cookies extra soft and chewy, mm -hmm. like really gooey in the middle That's and crispy yes. on the outside. That's my favorite. Okay. And the last um, little hint is... Oh, wait, do I need to keep this going? Well, you, yeah, you can if you want, okay. but... Um, it's up to you. you you're the cookie pro. Oh, I hear you're, I love you're cookie. making cookies yeah, you all the time. Fold it cookies? Yes. You make I mean, cookies. Fold it in. Around the holidays. Yeah, he we knows make cookies. folding like the, fold. the right term. Yeah. I don't believe this. Okay. Watch me fold. No. You're on this. No. Mm. Let's see. Is he Six. really folding, Christine? <laughs> no, this isn't folding yet. He's just adding the dry ingredients. I'm just no. adding it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hasty fold. It has a tiny bit of cinnamon, so it gives me all of those warm, yeah, that's cozy idea. vibes of holiday. So, so, so did he do an okay job Yeah, at this? he's actually Pretty doing good, a great right? job. The mixer Thanks. does most of the work in this case, the so mixer. you're just going to mix it until combined, mm -hmm. and then okay. it looks like this. Okay. This is where you guys get to have fun. We pull the kids in and say, add whatever. Oh, so nice. No. You, you put them okay. in. What do you do want? It? You okay. want chocolate? Yeah. You want peppermint? I like pieces. a peppermint. Mix Oops. it all together. Now, Kristen, I want to be clear on national television. It's okay to eat the cookie dough, right? So if your cookie dough has pasteurized eggs and heat treated flour like my dough that we ship nationwide, if you're yes. not making it at home, is safe to eat. Do These yours we're going to bake completely. Eggs? I don't know, but I eat it anyway. Uh -huh. I've been doing it for years and I'm still so here. Fold, so this is where you fold. This is the folding this technique. Is the fold, you yeah. fold it in, exactly. Get and then you're going to want to grab a cookie sheet. Okay. okay. Line the cookie sheet with parchment paper so that the bottom don't get brown and everything bakes oh, evenly and another tip is to rotate your cookie sheet halfway through baking mm -hmm. a lot okay. of ovens are really uneven right. mm -hmm. so use a cookie scoop yeah scoop an ice out. can't you use an ice cream scoop that's yeah that's, yeah that you and you want can even bigger than that oh, dip it in you. some more toppings so it comes D out can i just ask if you put that little thing does it make a nice size cookie um, that's a, a little, little bit of small. a smaller yeah, cookie, a small cookie, but okay. when they're small, you can eat about 100 of them. That's the rule. <laughs> that's true. You didn't know that? Just mm -hmm. pop yeah, okay. I knew that. So onto the same dough, we're going to make sorry, it can into... can I ask what happened here? I um, ate it. Can I ask what yeah, happened there? I'll finish. I'll finish. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to take the same dough, you're going to roll it in the sanding sugar, and then these are going to mm. turn into our peanut butter blossoms. So you can just use these little drops. When it comes out of the oven, press them into the top. Why peanut butter? Mm. Well... Or did I say peanut butter? Yeah, you said peanut butter. Peanut peppermint. Peppermint blossoms. Yeah, yeah. It all starts with a P. Yeah, it sure he does. Got, he got me distracted by eating now, the cookie. Now, can I, um, way, but you can so, do, so, so is good. it good? Yeah. They are good. Yes, the brown butter is really yummy. And pretty. then other options for this cookie dough to turn it into something special is um, like a slice and bake. You can mm -hmm. add some sprinkles, dip it in some white chocolate. That. You can do a stuffed oh. cookie cup. So this one has a <gasps> mini peanut butter cup in it. This one has chocolate truffles in it. What? And if you're doing that. something yeah. for the whole family, you can make it into oh. a stuffed skillet cookie. So you can add some ice cream on top. This is best served warm. Um, and in the middle is chocolate hazelnut spread. So mm. it's like, a little. Oh wait, God. like Nutella? Yes. You, yes. you have Nutella in the it's middle? In How the middle do you do that. So you just press down the cookie dough on the bottom, and then you put a half of a cup of, you could do peanut butter in this case, you could do the chocolate hazelnut spread, and then you put the cookie dough on top, pop it in the oven for about 30 minutes. It is so good, can, warm, and just Wow. Can we also just talk about what you did with this one? Right? What this is this? This is white chocolate chips, regular chocolate chips, candy-coated chips. Mm. This is like my amazing uh, candy Candy, drop candy, drop. The holidays are here. There's no time like the present to start stocking up on sweet treats. Okay, are we going to make these for Christmas or for Thanksgiving? What do you Everything say? in between.
between. Okay. Let's start you, today. Thank you. So, and our friend from Milk Bar, Christina Tosi, has you covered with her seventh book that's all about the cookies. The cookies. Why? The By cookies. the way, Christina, I just want to point out, out this window, we never... Out this window. They want your cookies. Out they this need window. Cookies. We never have this many Look, people. You're on but TV. today, with Christina Tozzi in the house, we got a, we got a huge <laughs> crowd. So we want to say thank you. All right. So. Your cookie obsession started when you were, what, four, four years old, five years old? Yeah, I mean, that was my entry into the yeah. kitchen. Yeah. I don't, do you bake with, like, the children in your life? Yeah. That was how okay. I got yeah. started. Yes. But that's, like, the superpower of a cookie, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, that's where it all started for me. It's why we serve the best cookies at Milk Bar. Yeah. And that's what this cookbook is all about. The infinite possibility oh. of what a cookie can do, but also the underdog nature of a cookie. Because we all know a cookie. Underdog. We all love a cookie, right? Like, it's you humble. Think a it's, cookie wait, is under, in a, an underdog? Wait, in it? the pastry world, I mean, there's croissants, yeah. there's layer cakes, eclairs. so cookies. Thank yes. you. Yeah, when there's an eclair in the world, a Look cookie is. You. But cookies need a spotlight, and that's what this cookbook is What's all about. What's the name of this cookie? So this one is the candy bar snack. Look, wait, don't tell me that's caramel. It's a peanut butter caramel. Jeez. Right? This is like my love letter to one of my favorite candy oh my bars, God. which has pretzels and peanut butter and caramel. So you're exactly, Jenna, you look at you. She's a crow. And then crow. you just use the same thing? The that's it. You spread the caramel that. around. Hoda, yeah, I'm am, getting you in the game. Two pretzels. Two perfect. On How this cute. cookie, I mean, you One. can do whatever you want to do. You can do more pretzels, Two. less pretzels. Okay. Then we're going to melt down some milk chocolate with some vanilla extract and some oil wow. to give it a little bit more flavor and fluidity. Okay. And as it melts, we are going to start dipping the cookies. So what? come with me. Okay. So, so we wait, have. What's happening here? This is, this for, is for another, another cookie that I brought oh, okay, you. Okay, Look okay. at you. So we We're have this going. vanilla milk chocolate. This is a chocolate wafer, peanut butter caramel. You're going to go cannonball in head first, head right? First? Boom. I guess you that's technically the not a cannonball. And then what? Then you put and it And then you're going to take your fork, and you're literally going to just flip it. Flip it. Wait, how do you do it? Upside down. Push it. Yeah, I got a little, I got a little t um, towel for you. Oh my god! And give it a little tap. So this cookie is like the cookie you dress up for any holiday season. It makes a great gift. It's great for like the Santa Claus table, whatever it is. It's so cute. And then you let this cookie rest and coat. We make a peppermint bark version of I this. I was gonna say coming onto the menu it's, at Milk Bar. I was gonna say Wait, that see. sounds great. So you just let it harden, and that's it. That's it. You can either Put harden it in, the it in the fridge. You can leave it out at room temp till that chocolate sets, and you get Wait, these look at beautiful. Oh, okay, it. you do a little beauty Let's, snap for me, here, Hoda. Here, Let's okay, see. we can split. I will split it. Well, no. Uh -uh. Oh, oh. <laughs> we can't split. I'm going to go ahead and eat my own. So you go, you give it a little crack in half, right? Mm. Look at the caramel coming out. This is what it's all Girl. about. Wow. Oh. Cookie land. Cookie land. No. That okay. Is now we're the going next back. is a jelly donut cookie. Okay. So we use fryer oil to make a cookie dough. We cut What's out the fryer round. Oil? It's, you know, when you have fry night and you're making french fries oh. or funnel cakes, okay. you save that oil okay. and you use it in a recipe. It's actually the secret ingredient in the newest cake at Milk Bar called the apple cider donut cake. Apple it cider makes, donut. Right, mm. where you would normally put oil into a okay. baked good recipe, what do we do? you put it into a cake. So, <laughs> Jenna, you're going to fill Come the on, bottom with... Is this just with, jelly? This is raspberry jelly. It's whatever kind of jelly oh, donut you nice want. That is. A little bit of more, frosting more, more. on top. There, Yeah, more is more, more right, more. Hoda? Yeah, more, more. Here we go. And you don't want it to... Some fro or some sprinkles on top. And, and then you layer it. it. That's it. So, this is jelly. like basically... <laughs> Uh, I also have a. What's that? This oh, we want to eat that. S'more, a s'mores cookie, chocolate marshmallow swirl s'mores. Wait, cookie. is this hard to make? This one. This one is super simple to make. It's a chocolate cookie dough, some graham crackers. You swirl a little marshmallow fluff, and like if you're mm, worn oh out God. on cookies, you know we got you at the bakeries. We'll ship it to you direct at milkbarstore.com. Or They're great gifts. You just go. You just go. You get the all about cookies cookbook. There's a world of cookies this waiting for you. This is amazing. You're <laughs> unbelievable. Mm -hmm. For these recipes, go to today.com slash food.
are back with even, today food, a sweet take on one of our favorite holiday traditions. We're talking cookies. All right, here's how it's going to work. Yep. We're each going to explain our favorite holiday cookies, and then we're going to let you vote for the winner on today.com. What you got? All right, so these are just simple sugar cookies. Mm -hmm. What makes them special is that my children make them and decorate them. In fact, we did it last night. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our annual tradition that my wife leads. There they are. Um, now, the ones here are a little prettier. <laughs> um, but simple sugar cookie recipe. But again, what makes them special is having the kids okay. decorate them and then, and then eat them together. Love. Okay, right. I've got, you guys, an Oreo cookie truffle. Oh. Boom, shakalaka. Okay, you grind yeah. up the Oreo cookies. Hold on, Al. I'm, I want you to hang on. Just pop this in your mouth, Al. Come on. <laughs> Greg, pop it in. I'm just yeah. going to get rid of the ears. <laughs> you don't eat the ears? No, pop it in. Why don't, why don't just pop yes. it in. Did you try it? Just get in there. Why are we eating Well, you can, ears? but okay, it's wait just, a minute. it kind of complicates. <laughs> oh. Listen, stop you it. Win. Thank you. Like, no. I can't even get in. Wow. Oh, my God. Ooh. Come on. Oh, are you really kidding good. me? That's good. Are we oh dying right We're done. Now? Really? Oreo That's cookie like, like truffles. That's like Oreo cookie Wait, how did you grind it up? You add cream cheese. You roll it around in some sprinkles. Hoda's love of Oreos, by the way, it's next level. No, this is You tweet about Oreos all the time. These are some of Hoda's Oreo tweets. Wait, nothing can beat this. These are ginger snaps with a slightly special ingredient. What's the special ingredient? Special ingredient. Oh, my God. Hang on, tell us before. Before we bite. No, I think you'll you'll like it. I don't want it. These a little warm. Take oh it. yeah, take I take it. Mmm, mmm, mmm. there. They're ginger snacks. Is it good? It's really With good. Bacon fat. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome. Wait, Wait, bacon fat. Bad enough. Old fashioned bacon fat. We just did a segment of lowering your. <laughs> a little bacon fat. <laughs> Doctor John. And, and nice spices. That does add a nice little flavor to it. And there you go. Oh man. Okay. okay. Go. So I have. These are my aunt Tilly's cookies. This is my aunt. My great aunt Tilly. She was Italian. They're traditional Italian cookies. They have that anisette oh, flavor yeah. in them. Mm, so okay. she just, uh, it wasn't a holiday if we didn't have these cookies. So mm -hmm. it's just, Thank you. I mean, f basic cookie ingredients, a little oh, Crisco, a little anise Aww, flavor. Okay. Aww. Aww. That was last year, Calvin helping me make the cookies. He loves mm. to help. Um, in the kitchen. So, Chanel. okay, so I think Delicious. so good. I, I, I'm not mm. gonna win, but here's my sell. What? If you just want a basic, yummy chocolate chip cookie, uh. these are the best chocolate chip cookies that I've ever had. I just, what do you, how do you do it? This, it's beyond simple. He's a 70% char dark chocolate. Why are you making that face? I'm making a face. No. Aren't like, they I'm, good? Have you, have you ever actually I'm, baked these cookies? Yes, they're so, my friend Chris, it's her recipe, Chrissy's mm. recipe. Those are but good. Just if you want a good chocolate chip recipe, go to today.com. But Hoda, I gotta tell you. The Oreo cookies. Oh my God. We're going to let the people decide. Okay. You vote today.com slash food. Check out the recipes. Oh, wow. Yeah, we are back with a special Christmas edition of Today Food. And aren't we lucky? Santa dropped off one of the best for us. Laura Vitale, the cook and hey. host of Laura, Vit Laura in the Kitchen, here with an easy-to-make breakfast menu that is just right for this occasion. It's the perfect balance of savory, sweet, and festive. Laura, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Now you have a daughter, Mia, who's what, two now? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yes. What's it been like this Christmas season to... Watch Mia. It's really like reliving your childhood all over again, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. It's like discovering the joy and fun of the holiday season all over again. And I'm like slightly sad it's almost over. And right. I kind of want to continue. You know, I want to keep it going because it's been the most joyful month I think I've ever oh, had. That's great. Well, good. Merry Christmas to the family. All right. So let's talk about some food. Right. Uh, in our household, my mom's from the South, from North Carolina. So right. we always do a big Southern breakfast on <laughs> Christmas morning. But I love this idea. What are we making today? It's like this sausage yeah, casserole. Yeah. So it's a sausage and leek casserole. It tastes like a giant sausage and cheese sandwich. That's all you got to know. Right. right. Sounds like a perfect brunch item, Super too. Super easy. And you can assemble it the night before. So what we're going to do is in this skillet, if you want to add some yep. bulk uh, breakfast sausage, Just you can add Italian sausage. Yeah. Add it right in with a little olive oil okay, to a hot skillet. Great. Break it apart. 
pretend that this is like hot and sizzly and delicious, and yeah. you're gonna break it apart with uh, a wooden spoon. Sizzle, yeah. And you're just gonna let that cook until it's about halfway cooked through. Yep. In the meantime, you're gonna slice up some leeks. I like leeks because they're like a mild onion, but okay. if you already have a ton of onions on hand from making stuffing, then just use an onion. Oh, that's a good it's, idea. It's fine. And you've this got, sausage, you're only cooking halfway through because you're, you're gonna end up baking off the other well, half? Well, because you're gonna cook it more with the leeks. Copy that. So Laura, once could, could you use spicy sausage? You can use spicy you sausage, wanna... Italian sausage, oh. breakfast sausage, some Turkey chorizo. Sausage. You can use any sausage you have on there hand. Hot dog. So once you, okay. when you rinse your leeks really well, you want to pat them dry because yep. there's a lot of water in there, but you want to make sure you wash them well. Okay. You unite them with your sausage. In the meantime, you're going to take some cheap bread, like mm -hmm. just like a slice, uh, slice bread. Uh -huh. And I just stir it into large chunks. But here's another thing. If you've got a baguette that's on mm -hmm. hand from Christmas, you know, Christmas Eve, use that. Like, don't let it okay. feel like this you... is the type of thing you can use some some uh, Stale bread. gently used bread. As Stale bread, in the yes. car Stale bread's fine. <laughs> Got it. You take all of your bread. You also take your cooked sausage and leeks. You're yeah. gonna add them to your bread. Mm. You're gonna whisk together eggs. Milk, salt, and pepper. A lot That's of eggs. That's like a it. dozen yes. eggs. Well, it feeds like 10 people. This is the custard, right? Yes, yeah. this is like the custard part. That what was in. that you just threw in? Uh, some dried mustard. Okay. It gives Ooh. it like a little something, something behind yeah. the dish that makes it just a little extra special. You whisk all of this together, if you would, with your big muscles. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where's, the, where's the guy? <laughs> and then you add some cheddar. You add some parsley. You mix it all in a 9 by 13 pan. Cover it. Pop it in the fridge overnight. I mean, this is really like a one-pot dish. It's Why do you yeah. do that? Why do you have to, it yeah. lets all the flavors really marry, and all of the custard soaks into the bread. So when you bake it, the interior mm. is really lovely and soft, mm. like a souffle, if you would. Right, so the next day, how, what, what's the baking? So instructions? 350 an hour the next morning with a little more cheese on top, and it's mm. perfection. Try that oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. next thing we're gonna do hot chocolate. Yes, we're gonna make hot chocolate. Why in the crock pot? Because that way your house smells <laughs> wonderful, and if you've got people <laughs> in, in your house that come and go like that's we do, so it's always warm. Mm -hmm. You never oh, have to worry smart. about making another thing of hot chocolate, and you just take. Take milk, you take cream. Yes. Mm -hmm. you take That's what makes a good hot chocolate. It does. I'm Don't fall full of water. No. no. You take, no. Also, you take evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk. Oh, wow. 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 Hey, now. Wow. Pick it up a notch, Lori. Right. It's going to be a Merry take, Christmas after all. But here's the best part you take chocolate chips and a pinch of salt on low for two hours, and your house will smell amazing. Oh, my gosh. You wow. have that with a bunch of toppings for the kids, oh, marshmallows. Man, but for the adults, a little creme de menthe will okay. take this into a real oh, holiday school. You know, really? Chocolate oh. and the mint together. And if you love Frangelico, add a little Frangelico mm. in there I do instead. Like that. That's good. Good. Little okay. Baileys. Mm. Yes. Little garnishes you have yeah. here, too. It's for kids. Cookies. You do little cookies, a candy cane, so all the things, fun things for the kids. <laughs> so cute. I also What's love, over there? What's the martini? I love, I love an espresso martini, mm. you oh, know, for the why adults. Not? But, uh, why not, right? Why not? I love an espresso martini. It's easy. It's coffee, coffee liqueur, Ooh. a little creme de cacao white. Um, you have a little Guys, vodka. Guys, how does it all taste? It's so fantastic. Good. You're this eating and drinking like delicious. Delicious. over there. What about this yogurt thing? So here's the thing. I don't like to buy flavored yogurt. I think it's way too sweet and has artificial flavors. I buy full fat Greek yogurt. Yeah. I do a little bit of good vanilla bean paste right in there mm -hmm. and a drizzle like of honey. Full fat. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a drizzle of honey. It, Top it, it with pomegranates, a little granola, a little toasted coconut. You're awesome. And it just tastes mm -hmm. like a million bucks. I mean, this is a home run on Christmas morning. Yeah. Well, it's thank fast. you so much. Lord, thank you. If you want the recipe, by the way, and trust us, you do. Just go to today.com <laughs> slash food.
Welcome back. It's Make Ahead Monday and time for another round of Dueling Dishes. Today we're featuring a holiday classic, the prime rib. That's right. Here to face off, we've got the owner of Trap House Barbecue in Phoenix, Arizona, Mr. Phil the Grill Johnson. And, <laughs> and we've also Hi, got, as she, there she is, there Anne is. Burrell, the chef and host. Hello. Of food. Hey there, Hi. Annie. Host of Food Network's Jeez, Worst Cooks in America. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. How you doing? So happy good to, to be here. Good to see you guys. All right, Phil, we're going to start with you. You, you, you start uh, with a paste on top oh. of your, 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 your prime rib to give it a southwestern feel. What goes into it? That, that, that's right. You know, we you kick it up in the uh, southwest. You know, it's yeah. all about the chili. So I'm doing a uh, chili. What I do is I use a grinder and I do a tr uh, peppercorn mm -hmm. and I grind that with the uh, chili. Ooh. And then I also add some rosemary into it at but I also have two tablespoons of mustard. I have some Worcestershire, some soy sauce, some garlic. And if you don't have a grinder, you'll be able to get some um, stuff that you can find on the shelf, some um, ancho mm -hmm. you can find on the shelf. But you want to keep that separate. So I grind that and I keep that separate. And then I just tap that in. Ooh, the reason yeah. why I keep that separate, because that's also going to be my finishing rub. So... What I'm doing is I'm making a paste. I get that liberal and rubbed in onto my prime rib. And what I do now, because it's now a kitchen tool, it used to be just in the restaurants where you would use a sous vide, but now it's been coming a uh, household tool. And I just drop that in. This is like a foolproof way of getting a good prime rib. And I just set that, uh, the sous vide at 132 degrees, let that rock for 12 hours, and then after that, I bring that out, add my rub, finish it off. That's it? And I put that on the uh, smoker. And if you don't have a smoker, you can also use an oven or a broiler. And this is your finished product. So oh I have goodness. a nice smoked chili prime rib. Oh. And look at that. Look at, look at that. that. It's just... <laughs> that is, oh, if I could just come through the screen. Wow, that, <laughs> and, that would be and, something. And, and you know what? A fan favorite just for a uh, Make Ahead Monday... The leftovers you could turn into a Philly cheesesteak. Oh, Boom. there you go. There you go. All right. Okay, <laughs> Ann, let's let's turn to you now. How do you season the meat? And I know you can complement the veggies with yours too. I do, I do. I have a, a big meat right here. I brush it with a rub that I make with um, rosemary, garlic, salt, and a little cayenne pepper, mm. and then lots of extra salt on top. Um, and we get this guy in the oven at a really high temperature for the first, like, 20 to 30 minutes to get the brown food crust <laughs> on the outside of there. And then we turn the oven down uh, to 350. So we start at 450 for the first little chunk of time. Go to 350. We put lots of wine and stuff in the bottom of the pan. So that Ooh. kind of with uh, sitting on a, a bed of veggies, of okay. mushrooms, All of right. baby carrots. And then we pull this guy out of the oven. And I just can't stress to people enough when you are cooking big chunks of meat, the importance of letting your meat rest before you start to cut it. Like a chunk of meat like this, a nice big meat, like look at brown <laughs> food on all these veggies and everything on the bottom. It's kind of a one pot meal, but you must let it rest for at least 30 to 40 minutes. So those juices can just calm down inside there. If you cut this when it comes right out of the oven, what will happen? Happen what? is all those beautiful juices will run out and you will be left with a big chunk of gray dry meat and that's not no what we're looking that. for <laughs> nobody wants that so we're looking for big brown meat uh lots of veggies and goodies underneath oh and then goodness. you slice this mm, and it's perfect every time and then what i do with my leftovers i uh i take my meat i i cut it up into tiny bites um, saute it with some onions, some peppers, and, and some of these and veggies plenty underneath of leftovers there, for and make a too. hash, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Phil and yeah. Ann, thank you Both so you much. Guys. Those are hashtag holiday goals. Yum. Thank you much. <laughs> Thanks to both of you. you. There's one comfort dish that you can never go wrong with, and that is lasagna. And who doesn't love lasagna? I know I do. It's a real crowd pleaser, and it's perfect for your holiday parties. 
and it's very easy to make, but you're going to have to explain how. Yeah, because there are some do's and don'ts. And That's here right. to share her tips, Allison Rome, which is a New York Times columnist, and she's the author of Nothing Fancy. Okay, Harry just said that he loves to cook, so he's going to be Love taking it. copious notes oh, on watching. what you're making. Right. So this is the perfect lasagna. I would think you it's call the perfect it lasagna. Actually, in the book, it's called A Very Good Lasagna, a very just good. because I want to manage expectations. <laughs> expectations yeah, right. I don't, I'm not trying to blow anybody's lid off, but a very okay. good lasagna. All That's right, good. so what do you start with? So what? it's a pretty basic tomato sauce, and I start with onions, garlic, olive oil, and then I like to add anchovies. And that's oh. not going to be for everybody, but what? I say give it a chance. Because I'm going to give it a chance. Do you see how good this smells? It's, better it, yes. than usual? Well, it's not yeah, overpowering. Yes, it's it just does smell very good. Subtle. It's just a few. And so then what do you have in there so far? A few Onions pieces of anchovies? Like, yeah, I mean, I'll throw the whole tin in there. Really? Because I'm, I'm a wild woman, and, and I live on the edge. <laughs> but I feel like if you're just getting into the anchovy game, start with a few fillets. Okay. And I stand by this in any tomato sauce, but it's especially good in lasagna. Okay, so you just throw a little tomato paste, that's a it? Little tomato paste and that's okay. going to kind of cook and get caramelized. And you know how tomato paste and canned tomatoes have that raw tinny yes. feeling? Mm -hmm. So cooking it out is going to help the sugars in the tomato caramelize, which is going to, you know, take the edge off. Okay. I notice you're not using any measuring cups or anything. You just kind of uh, throw it in. I never do. Yeah, I mean, I good, do huh? when I'm writing a recipe because you must. Right. Um, we're going to crush these tomatoes okay. with, with our, our hands. hands. Yeah, you want to, yeah. I mean, I'll. I'm gonna get in there. All right, yeah. you really okay. do live on the edge, Allison. <laughs> White shirt, tomatoes. Yeah, right. hold it. Yeah, if you hold it away from your bond like that, then first you of all, will. I have never done this. It is so There's amazing. Sauce, like Isn't this the most fun people. you've ever had? Yeah. <gasps> Okay. I know. There's nothing oh, more fun. Oh my God! I'm okay. in heaven. Okay. I'm now gonna what give do you, you this. Do? There's a talent to your right if you want to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the reason I like doing it by hand is because <laughs> the crushed tomatoes in a can can be a little too watery, That's fun. and I like the bitsy parts of the tomatoes. Yeah, okay. a little chunky. Yeah, well, Me too. a little chunky. Okay. Um, and then that I'll take the can that the tomatoes came in and I'll fill it with water. Okay. You don't waste around. anything. No, yeah. I don't. You're saving And then that, add yeah. it to that. And what that does is it's going to kind of thin out the sauce, giving it a mm. chance to cook okay. down. All right. And then so you have a little spoon holder. Okay, so that's very nice. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> you're very cute. Um, so while that simmers, then we're going to get our cheese mixture going. Okay. And I know what you're thinking. One cheese just simply isn't enough. Nope. <laughs> so we're going to go with not one, but three. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we have mozzarella for that kind of chewy, stringy yeah. vibe. And then we have ricotta for that luscious. Oh, you have a tomato yum. seed. <laughs> of course <laughs> I do. Um, and then Parmesan for saltiness. Oh, so boy. these are all going to go in together. Okay. I'm and then the in secret ingredient, please. Look at all secret that. Look at that. Me. Is what? This I would just eat that, is that out of a bowl. Cream? Which is heavy cream. Go, girl. And so if you've ever noticed in a baked pasta, if that uh, ricotta mixture gets kind of grainy or dry, yeah. this heavy cream is going to prevent that from happening. Love. Okay. And, you know, I okay. love dairy. Again, All right. on the edge. We, don't, we have just about a minute. Great, but okay. So then we have our noodles. <laughs> our noodles, which are al dente. Mm. Don't ever use no-bake noodles. Don't. Oh. Don't. Okay, no. we and won't. No. Why? Just because. Because they're unreliable. Okay. And I don't, don't trust do them. Okay, well, we trust you. So, so, and then to layer, it's kind of like a person with any skill level can do this part. <laughs> so layer it in. You want me to do it? Yeah. <laughs> That's easy. That looks easy, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, that part you can do. Yeah. So this, <laughs> and then we layer in the noodles, which have been slick with a little bit of oil just to prevent sticking. Okay. okay. What's the one mistake we're all making? Did we already pass it? No bake noodles. Well, see how saucy this is? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like it needs yeah. to be this saucy. If it's thicker, your lasagna is going to be dry. So what happens? is because the noodles are sort of par-baked. Oh. So they're going to cook so the in the key, sauce. The mistake we make is we put sauce it's that's not too, saucy enough. Not saucy enough. Yeah. Extra Some sauce. of that's going to evaporate out anyway, okay. I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. okay, then you just keep adding cheese. More, <laughs> because why not? Gosh, look at that. I know. So Hurry cheese again. Up. Two. Yeah. We're, <laughs> two cheeses again. Okay. And how long do you put that guy in the one. oven? This is in the oven uh, covered with foil for about 35 to 45 minutes. Like 325? No, or? like 350, 375. Okay. okay. And then you take the foil off, Yum. and then what do you and do? And that's how you get these crispy Stop brown it. bits, which oh, is my favorite, that's part. my favorite part. I know oh my God, the it's the it's the reason to eat lasagna, in my opinion. Mm. Holy cow, that's really then, good. I know. No joke. It's the anchovies. Mm. <laughs> All juice. Oh wait, I hate anchovies. <laughs> No, you love them. That's the secret. That Wait, really what's this real quick? Oh, and so this is a tiramisu. I oh. feel like if you're going to lean in with the Italian-American mm, casserole-style okay. dinner, then you repeat with Eugenius. the tiramisu. That's insane. Everything in a casserole dish. What time are you coming over? Done. Exactly. Al I mean, Allison's what time are we having? amazing. The get this recipe. Head to today.com.
here and Christmas is right around the corner. So today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two delicious superfood recipes for your holiday feast. Take a look. Come back, Craig. So, Al. Hi, guys. <laughs> today, I'm dishing out two hearty, crave-worthy entrees for your holiday spread. And we're starting with slow cooker brisket. Here I have um, some garlic powder. I'm adding in salt and pepper, some paprika, and some onion powder. I'm going to mix this up, and this will become our dry rub. So I'm just patting in all of the dry rub on one side. I'm going to flip this over. Now lift the brisket and put it carefully right into the magic pot. I do it so that the fat is facing upward. Next, we're adding in two sliced onions, two pound bag of carrots, all chopped up in large chunks. Now we're starting on the sauce. This is two cups of reduced sodium beef broth a little bit of tomato paste and reduced sodium soy sauce. I'm just taking my spoon and distributing the tomato sauce. And that's it, put the cover on, set it on low for eight to nine hours, and here is the finished brisket. You're left with a lot of thin but flavorful liquid. I like to make a slurry using a tablespoon of either cornstarch or arrowwood flour and two tablespoons of water. Stir it up, and you could drizzle a little bit of the gravy over your brisket. Guys, this is really good. Now we're making a cheesy spinach lasagna. First, I cooked lean ground turkey meat, and I mixed it with a jar of marinara sauce and a little bit of water. So here I have part skim ricotta cheese, one egg plus an egg white, Lots of seasonings, oregano, some dried basil, a little bit of pepper, and two packages of frozen chopped 10 ounce spinach that's really well drained. And I'm just gonna mix this up, add a very thin layer at the bottom of my delicious meat sauce, and just spread this out. Next, I put down three uncooked noodles, and next, half of your spinach ricotta filling. Next, I'm gonna add more of my protein-packed meat sauce. Level that out a little bit, and it's time for three more noodles. And now for the remainder of our spinach ricotta mixture, right on top. Okay, three more noodles, and we will top it with all of the remaining meat mixture. This is part skim mozzarella cheese. I take a little bit of water, about a half a cup, and I'm going to run the water along the sides of the lasagna. I mist my tin foil with a little bit of oil spray. Now it's tightly covered. I'm popping it in the oven set at 350 for 45 minutes. Then I'll uncover it and put it back in the oven for a final 30 minutes and lasagna is served. And there you have it, two classics reimagined with my personal health twist. Nice. Looks Yum. Delicious. Joy, amazing. As mm -hmm. always, for these recipes, head to today.com slash food. The holidays are a busy season for most, so wouldn't a one-pot meal with less cleanup make your life a little easier? Oh, yeah, it would. And even better, this dish can be served for breakfast, for lunch, mm -hmm. or for dinner. Aisha Nurjada is the executive chef and partner at two New York City restaurants, Shuka and the recently opened Shuket. Aisha, first of all, congratulations Thank on these crazy, so successful relationship. I mean, a, a restaurant. So, what do you? What are people? I mean, some people don't even know what shakshuka is. Right. Shakshuka simply is eggs that are braised in a very, very flavorful tomato sauce. Oh. I mean, that sounds like a delicious brunch yes. dish. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna help, or we're gonna try to help. I'm you. gonna show you this easy recipe. Okay. We and start like, with garlic. We're going to start with garlic course, right here. We're going to smash garlic. Starts garlic. Everything starts with garlic. Oh, with garlic. Yes. And this smell of satisfying. garlic and olive oil is probably one of my favorite. Yeah. So we're going to smash and just rough chop this. This does not have to be perfect. Okay, we're looking okay. for favor, flavor. We're not looking for perfection. Okay. So we're just going to run our knives through that very quickly. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you like more garlic, put it in. And if you don't like a lot of garlic, but you like the flavor, a good trick is, is just to smash it like this. 
kind of leave the chunks whole, and then later you can take it out. Oh, okay. that's interesting. Yeah. So you have on green onions and... So started here, we have some jalapeno, because mm. I like it spicy. Ooh, I don't know about you ladies. Yes, girl. Do. And if you don't, of course, you can take it out, but we have some onions, garlic, and jalapeno here. Okay. Just sauteing very easily. There and this go. is my melange of spices that I like to use in shakshuka. Everyone has their own, of course. What do you like, Aisha? I love cumin. Oh, yeah. I mean, who yeah. does it, right? Yes. Okay. It should be put in fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> here we have some smoked paprika. Okay. Some turmeric, yeah. which is not only good for color, but also inflammation. Yes. Yeah. And then this is here, a coriander, which mm -hmm. gives us that light, um, kind of like citrus flavor. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my sleeper favorites, yeah. ground ginger. <gasps> oh, ground wow. ginger. It's like a hidden treasure in the back of this sauce. Okay. It gives it a little pop. You like it better than using the fresh stuff, huh? Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it depends okay. on the recipe. But in this one, okay. I think the ground and ginger goes a long way. A Much whole more. can of... What is no. that? These, this is two cans yeah. of yes. tomatoes that are crushed. Can I pour it in? Please, if you can help me right here. Sure. Okay. Beautiful. Wow, that looks gorgeous. Wow, you ladies don't even need me. Look at the good job oh, you're doing here. Oh, my God. I did so you're going to okay. mix this in right now, yeah. and we're going to set this on medium heat, and you're going to okay. let it simmer for 45 minutes. Okay. okay that's the important. beauty of this sauce is after it's done, put it in an air tight container. It can stay in the refrigerator for four to five days. Use it. So that's or your you sauce. can freeze it. There's okay. your sauce. Now let's get to the egg portion. This is my favorite part. Okay. Here's our kale. Now if you don't like kale, who doesn't? I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. roast the cauliflower would be well. Addition, we can add some chickpeas to this. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then what? So we're going to add our sauce here. Oh, okay. look, look, look. That looks good. Okay. okay. I'm going to take this. Yeah. Oh, we're just going to smooth the sauce this out. This is important right, right. here, what you're So doing. what you want to do is mix this together because each part of the shakshuka, you want to get a little bit of the vegetable, right? A little yeah. bit of that jalapeno. Yes. Mm. And we sure just want to make sure that it's kind of flat. Okay, now what? Okay, now trick we're number yeah. three. I'm so excited right if you, now. If you, you can help me out. Yep. Can we crack it in here? Oh, in here? Mm. And this is the part that's, that I think is key when making shakshuka. Okay, tell us. Is the well. We're going to take our spoon and put it in here. Do three? Yeah, please. You make a little well. A little well. And do you... Um, scramble the eggs, or you like them? No, fried? we're gonna just we're like gonna poach it right in the sauce hole, just like that. So gives you a little space right there, and what it does, it wow, lets the white go to the bottom of the pan because you really want the white to cook and the yellow yolk to be runny. Oh my Perfect. gosh! Perfect. Okay, one more. Oh my God, this. I'm looks coming over to the delicious already made part. All right. So you, how long do you? So cook here that? you just want to you just ever want to this, you, this oh, yeah. you can yeah. just simmer here mm -hmm. for about three or four minutes, and then you pop it into an oven at 350. You Wait. garnish it with what kind? Is this feta? This is feta cheese. <gasps> Look okay. What's and these some herbs. We have some dill, parsley, and cilantro. This looks beautiful. What's this bread action? So this you got is going called on. frena. This is our Moroccan style flatbread mm -hmm. that's made with oh garlic God. confit, fresh za'atar, and olive oil. Okay. What do you ladies mm. think? First of all, the fact that you're a restaurant is always packed makes perfect sense. Thank you. And do you serve this? Heaven. At we will be serving this. We have this at Shuka at brunch. Yes. We probably do about 400 shakshuka on a Saturday and a Sunday. Mm. We've got to get to Total. your restaurant. You in have front to of the come. Hottest in town. You mm -hmm. have to come, please. And any of y'all that want to oh my God. come into town, this go to it. This is lovely. For this recipe, head to Hoda. I mean, to today.com. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Today's been that day. I don't even know why. Well, I'll do it. For today's recipe, you can go to today.com today slash food.
lot of us have traditions this time of year, and sometimes it involves a holiday meal. Well, this morning, award-winning chef and owner of Field Trip here in New York City, J.J. Johnson, is sharing his family's tradition, a seafood feast. Take it away, J.J. Thanks, guys. So my household's always, always about tradition, and this year I want to bring my tradition into your household, and it's going to be about gumbo. Fun fact, gumbo needs okra, and that's why my grandma put it on the table every year. She loved that Louisiana, South Carolina, West African flavor, and we indulged in it. Every pot was different. It was matter what was in her fridge, which she could afford, um, but we knew it was delicious, and it meant wealth, prosperity, and wellness going into the new year for us. And I want to bring that at your table this year. You can make your own gumbo spice mix. Onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne, smoked paprika, oregano. This is where all the magic is. This is what makes gumbo gumbo. While that butter melts down, you know, it all depends on what type of roux you make, where you're from. This style of roux, we're gonna get it to milk chocolate. All right, come on, we're gonna add in our flour. Oh, you hear that? That's simmer, simmer, simmer. And we're gonna make our roux. The darker the roux, the less powerful it is. So that's why we cook it out. And also, we're cooking out that flour, so we're getting that nice caramel color. A little onion, a little pepper, a little celery. I love celery in the gumbo. Got some peppers for spice. I'm gonna throw those right into our roux. I'm gonna throw our vegetables in there. Ooh! Stir that up. Now the vegetables cool down the roux, so it doesn't get overcooked. Okay, look at that everybody. We're gonna add a little bit of gumbo spice here. Some gumbo spice in there. Ooh, stir that up. Look how beautiful that looks. And now we're gonna go in the Jordan's. Some crab meat, blue crab meat from Louisiana, right here. Boom. Come on, we can get a little more than that. Boom. Bay scallops, bay scallops. Some shrimps. Shrimp. And our lobster. Mm. Now that's good. I want you guys to all have a happy new year. Stay healthy, stay blessed. I love you all. And make this gumbo. JJ, thank you. Let me tell you, his place, oh. field trip, so good. I gotta go. Yes. Right, right down here at 30 Rock. Yeah, they have go. one here. Yeah, and they're opening up more. Happy New Year. And you can get these recipes at today.com slash food.